This live broadcast is brought to you by Stay tuned as ITV takes you to the heart of Hajj in this special live broadcast from Saudi Arabia. Of the three million people congregate and move in exactly the same places at exactly the same time without a problem. Alhamdulillah. Um, of course, as you can see here on the scene from behind me, it's the area or the the holy area of Mina. We are on the first day of uh, of Eid al-Adha, and we are. Um, I feel this spread side is is alive here yes, when, uh, the process of hajj yes is very very emotional and uh, yes it is it really touches all of us as muslims the hajj has a series of rituals which have to be performed but hajj is far more deeper than the ritual that was the experience Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, who is the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa taala be with you all. Once again, respected viewers, I'm your host. My name is Samih Jad, and inshallah, I'm with you in the special coverage about Hajj. And of course, tomorrow also is the day of Arafah, and it is indeed a wonderful day, a blessed day. And uh, inshallah, I, I wish also in the beginning of this program to make the talbiyah. Uh, and I feel, and most of our, our viewers already also wish to say the talbiyah. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك. You can make it also uh, uh, while we are here and we are yearning to uh, to make it in 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 in, uh, in Arafat and in Mecca al Mukarrama in these sacred places in these wonderful places. We, we inshallah Allah subhanahu wa taala will grant us the ability to go for Hajj and make that uh, these talbiya, this wonderful talbiya. Uh, inshallah in today in today's program we will be crossing over to uh, Mecca al Mukarrama to Mina to see uh, how the Hajjaj are getting ready inshallah for the day of Arafat which will be starting uh, in the Fajr of tomorrow inshallah from the Fajr of tomorrow and uh, uh, till the Fajr of the Fiyam al Nahar. And in the beginning I, I would just uh, would like to also speak speak about some of the virtues of this day of Arafah and uh, some of some of our viewers asked some questions in the beginning about uh, which day is a day of Arafah and uh, there's some confusion it's a common question actually and we always say that uh, uh, or, or like how the majority of scholars are speaking about that and and telling us that the people must follow the country and the, the hilal of the country uh, this is the, the the major view that we must follow our country and 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 how the the calendar of our country uh, when when the when the moon is seen then we follow that moon uh, for the beginning of the of the months uh, but beside this fasting during the 10 days of the hijjah the 9 day of the hijjah is recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can also fast tomorrow which is a day of arafah in uh, in Mecca al mukarramah and then we fast also uh, we can also fast the, the the ninth day which will be here on saturday inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us we must make a lot of dua in that day because the dua is blessed and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says khayru dua dua yawm arafa all right we will be crossing now inshallah for a live feedback from uh, Mecca al mukarramah and after that we shall continue stay with us Late in the evening or early in the morning, whatever you might call it, but Arafah is buzzing with spiritually filled persons as they make their way from Mina and surrounding uh, areas so that uh, the people and the Hujajia can experience Arafah, so that they can experience that Waqt of Wukuf on this blessed plains. And uh, one of the Hujaj performing Hajj this year, another one of the ITV crew members will be joining us on here shortly. But before I go, we have been inundated with messages through the Twitter um, uh, hashtag ITV Hajj 1435 hashtag 
And we have a challenge out to the viewers of ITV. We need that hashtag to trend by the time we wrap up this broadcast tomorrow. Now we know that Hajj is a massive exercise. It's a big doing. It's something that has thousands and thousands of individuals who are in the kingdom here from our broadcast footprint, if not hundreds of thousands. So we want you to hashtag Hajj1435, ITV Hajj1435, so that we might be able to see where and who our viewers are, where and who our viewers um, uh, are talking to and what they are talking about. So do that, hashtag this evening, ITV Hajj1435, so that you can make sure that you send your message, that you request your dua, that you make sure that uh, your dua and your thoughts about Hajj is also shared with our broadcast areas. Uh, people in Cape Town might have stories to tell uh, that people in uh, neighboring countries of South Africa in our broadcast footprint uh, did not hear before. So we want you to send us your message via Twitter, hashtag ITVHajj1435. Pervez, assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum assalam. Good to be here. Alhamdulillah, the, the moment has arrived. Yes. Take us through your feelings, take us through your emotions. Um, let the viewers know what it's been like for you step by step. Uh, mashallah, I started my journey on Saturday and uh, I only had the chance to make a uh, perform Ubra on Wednesday, which, which was yesterday. Uh, it was like three days wait for me. Uh, we had technical stuff to sort things out and uh, when the day came, of course, it was a complete different feeling. My wait was over. My sabr, the reward for my sabr was given. I was in Haram Sharif, the most beloved place for, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of the Salaam. And of course, all of the Muslim Ummah as well. Um, I'm here now on the plains of Arafat, right opposite uh, Masjid uh, Namira. I can see uh, most of the, almost all the people have been coming through. And half, half the crowd, I think, they are in Sulmina. After Fajr, they'll come through. Uh, the important thing for me to see right now is Ummah in uniformity. I mean, every single person, black, white, African, Chinese, Indian, Asian, smallest nation from reunion in the Indian Ocean up to United States of America, Almost everyone is in one uniform, which is a two piece of cloth here. So that's, that's, a, that's a feeling I have. That if we can be together right now like this, why not on a larger scale in social, political and any other level? The day of Arafah must be one other moment that you are feeling anxious about, that you um, everybody's been telling you about this Waqt of the Kuf. Everybody's been saying things. But now you're on the doorstep um, and you don't really know what to expect. Yes, of course. Uh, when I broadcasted my being here to in, at, in Arafat, of course, with my friends, families, and extended, extended uh, people who I know. And I have been inundated with messages asking me to special duas on their behalf. And uh, I will only get a chance, I think, after our broadcast is over, I think maybe tomorrow afternoon. And I have a long list of names, requests from my, on my, from my behalf, from my way, up to Allah, reaching out to Allah, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in any way, whatever we can uh, get from Allah. Th that asking of help is a big step for some people. People think, no, no, no. I've been a bad person. I've been somebody that doesn't make salah. I've been somebody that frequents places that are haram. Um, let's give up hope, man. It's fine, I'm already a bad person. How would you explain to someone like that that Allah is most merciful, that Allah will forgive you no matter what you've done? Myself, up to Thursday, I didn't know. And my wife and my friends, they all know. It, has, it would have been very difficult for me to be here. And uh, it was unexpectedly done. And I can tell you, 
there is light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. There was no way I could have imagined I would be here. And I'm here. So I'm the first, first an example of don't lose hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Alhamdulillah, that light is probably that light when you find contentment in your heart. Definitely. After you said Astaghfirullah. Yeah. After you've recited your kalima. Yeah. After you come here and you see that there are people of all colors, shapes, sizes, backgrounds, professions that come here and stand in, they stand in the same white cloth you have on. Yes. They stand at the same point where all of them are equal by Allah. For the time on earth here also, that equality is echoed in what we're wearing. The king and myself both have a white cloth around yes. us today. Mm. The man who scratches in the bin, who Allah has given that opportunity to come perform Hajj by means beyond his control, he is wearing the ikharam, the same, yes. and so is the advocate who is an advocate in the High Court, and that person has to stand next to the pauper or the beggar. Islam really balances everything and shows yes. us that w amongst our differences, we can find something common and unite around it. Yes, I mean, uh, by Allah's command in terms of wearing haram, which is two-piece cloth, whether it's the emperor or the pauper, whether it's a person who's sitting in the highest of the office or the street, street mate, Everyone has to wear the same. I think Allah's idea of telling us to be together in a way that in His eyes we are all the same. Though we may have differences among ourselves, but I think we should try to come to a level of understanding that okay, we are same at the end of the day, we will end up in the soil. You mentioned about ending up in the soil and talk about where people are from. South Africans are currently still in MENA. They come here much later. But currently there are pictures on screen from our cameras in MENA. And you can see that movement of people moving away from MENA, people passing on camera, walking towards Muzdalifa, or rather walking towards Arafah, and walking towards Arafah with that same intention that we are here. Yes. They're walking from Mina now. We are here already, but tomorrow, from after the while till the end of the waqt of Wukuf, you do as mustajab. Allah will accept you. Allah will forgive you. Inshallah. Allah will grant you, inshallah, what is due to you in this world and due to you what is due to you in the world year after. I have uh, my own list of requests, of course, uh, on my duas. First will be for my late father. Uh, if he was alive, he would have been over the moon hearing that I'm here at, at Hajj, for Hajj and all that. Uh, it's kind of emotional right now. My mother, if, if she, of course she's in India, I wish she, she could be watching me being in the, on the plains of Arafat. Of course, my friends, my family, my wife, my child is watching me right now. And uh, I think before I leave, I would like to give out the message, but uh, let's talk about uh, planes of Arafat, which is more important. Uh, I can see that young kids, three years old, up to 90-year-old people walking around. Of course, it's not too hot at the moment, so uh, they're okay. And uh, for them, it's just one thing on their mind, which I'm, I've been uh, waving them, waving them uh, there's no form of stress. They're here. They know this is, the, this is the time to ask for forgiveness, to ask for anything what their heart yes. says. Yes. And uh, for the next 17, 18 hours, that's all people are going to do. Ask for Allah's help in whichever way, whatever way the idea is. And we should never give up on knowing that Allah is most merciful. Definitely. You look around here and you see a sea of people coming into Arafah. All different shapes and sizes, like you said earlier on. Do you think that this is a, a notice or this is a way for Islam to prove that we can find a common ground 
and unite around that like people unite on Arafat? Yes, definitely. I mean, if you take it this way, Allah's command uh, for us to wear two pieces of cloth, which is plain, simple white cloth. Every man, whether he is from the highest or top, topmost office up to the street level, they all wear the same outfit. The idea behind this is uniformity, unity in diversity. And uh, if we have this message, if we learn this message in the simplest way, I think it's, it's, it's a good idea for us to be uh, together. Though we will have differences, I'm not saying of course we will have differences, but yes. as long as we come to some sort of understanding, meeting halfway, that's what it's all about. Inshallah, we are also still taking those tweets and through the course of the night, we'll be taking more tweets. Um, hashtag your tweet for us. Hashtag it, uh, hashtag ITV Hajj 1435 and we will read out your message on here. Tell us about your feeling. Tell us how you feel about uh, the time you are on Hajj or your planning currently that you are doing uh, to go on Hajj. And there's so much that we want to tell you about this Mubarak journey, about this Mubarak time that we're in. Um, and this year it's um, Hajj or Arafah on a Yomul Jumu'ah. Yeah, so yeah, it's a sure. kind of um, a situation where there are Juma we know is the Eid of the week. Yeah. It's already a day filled with a lot of spirituality and advices for spirituality. And now um, uh, 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 that kind of where you take this one event and it goes to everybody via the means of uh, platforms like ITV, yeah. um, like um, uh, other channels broadcasting from here. And so we find that this message brings unity this message brings mahabba amongst the ummah. This message brings that kind of friendliness that you would like to see amongst people. Where people are different, yes. where they know that they're different and then understand that they, they, they're different. But because of them uniting behind the kalima, it's all let's work together a uh, kind of scenario. You've mentioned that you have prepared in a certain way for Arafah. Um, take us through some of those things that you are expecting during the Waqt of Wukuf um, or that you are expecting to feel uh, during the time of Wukuf, inshallah. As far as I'm concerned on the day of Wukuf, uh, through ulemas, alims, molana, sheikhs, we have always learned one thing that Allah forgives every sin on the day of Arafah. You are out as a pure rest of the baby. My list of dua from Allah will be, first of course, I will ask for, for the forgiveness of all the sins I have committed, whether knowing, unknowing, big, small. Yeah. Allah knows everything, yeah. there is nothing hidden, so yeah. my heart is open to Him. And I will admit, accept all the responsibilities I have had upon. Mm. And hopefully I'll expect Allah to forgive me and uh, inshallah uh, I'll walk out as the purest of the baby. I mean, we, we make to Allah that Allah grants all of us a Hajj Makbu. Inshallah. Allah grants those that hasn't been here the opportunity to be here and perform Hajj inshallah. And to those that have been here since I left here last year or since I left uh, Saudi Arabia last year until I found out that I'm coming this year, there was always that that subliminal du'a, that du'a in the back of your, your, your mind, where you make du'a that, inshallah, Allah, grant me the opportunity uh, to be um, on Arafah uh, um, again. Um, pictures of Mina still coming through from the facilities on Mina, from the cameras on Mina, and people can see the magnitude of people. It's not a thousand people. Yes. It's a hundred groups of a thousand people walking down the road at the same time. Um, and, and we are glad, alhamdulillah, that we can bring this to people. Earlier on, I asked Ashraf, I'm going to ask you the same question. Hajj as it stands is the biggest thing that can happen to any person who's God-fearing. Yes. It's that moment where you literally as close as you can possibly come with your God. Yes. But now, secondly, you also have a responsibility. You have an amana from the ummah to come here and make sure that they are also finding um, uh, uh, um, happiness and joy 
and learning about Islam and the Hajj via this broadcast. How do you feel being part of the broadcast um, and performing Hajj at the same time? Uh, initially, I was a little skeptical when I came to know about uh, I'll be I'm selected for Hajj. Uh, once you come down here, you realize how close you can be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, of course, you have feelings. Sometimes you do move away from the feeling of mm. if you are in stress or you are uh, things are going wrong against you. Yes. You realize why me all the time. Yes. But when you're here, you realize that, no, there's no such thing as that. You are, as much as all the others, are closest to Allah. It's just like Allah is around you or you are around Him. And uh, I can tell you one thing, uh, whether you are God-fearing or not necessarily God not non-God-fearing, but like you are away from it. The moment you see the room in the Haram Sharif. Yeah. It, it's over for you. Mm. It's just that you are now in the vicinity of Allah's existence, like He is right in front of you. Whether you have been believing it or not yes. before, yes. You know, spiritually, but yes. Alhamdulillah, Pervez, we make dua that Allah grants all of us Hajj Makbul, inshallah. inshallah. That Allah grants us the understanding. Uh, to see things differently, to see things in the best possible way and that Allah grants us the opportunity of being able, inshallah, inshallah to come ameen. back to the plains of Arafah. Ameen. That we bring our families along with us, inshallah. inshallah. That we bring our parents and brothers and sisters along with us and everything um, that is good may it come from the journey, inshallah. inshallah. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. That was Pervez Khan, one of our uh, members of the crew that's also performing their Faral Hajj this year. Um, and inshallah, we will be talking uh, to our crew members as the time passes with our broadcasts here from uh, uh, Arafah uh, through the course of this evening and the rest of the days of Tashriq uh, on, uh, the, the, all the way through um, until Sunday we'll be broadcasting from Arafah and Mina, uh, and thereafter, inshallah, we will be broadcasting again from our studios in Azizia. Until we speak the next time, I bid you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And don't forget that hashtag, hashtag ITV Hajj 1435. Do you get shower? Get to shower. khairan to our team in Makkatul Mukarrama for uh, giving us this wonderful and blessed uh, scenes from Makkatul Mukarrama, and uh, it shows actually the universality of the religion of Islam, where many people, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, are performing the Hajj and uh, from different colors, from different races, people coming to that Mubarak place and perform the Faridatul Hajj and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all the Hujjaj and accept also uh, the du'as of the Hujjaj and the du'as of the Ummah at large, those people who are making du'as specifically on the day of Arafah. And speaking about the day of Arafah, which, uh, which, which in fact the Hujjaj are getting ready for the day of Arafah, which will be tomorrow inshallah in Mecca al Mukarrama. Uh, speaking about some of the virtues of that day, the day of Arafah, is in is is the day in which Allah subhanahu wa taala completed the deen for us, completed the religion of Islam for us. It's called the day of tamamud deen, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, uh, descended down the verse from the Quran on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on that day, where the, where the verse is saying, "Al-yawm akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiyatu lakum al-Islam dina." On that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and he revealed this verse upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during Hajjatul Wada' which were also on a Friday and on, uh, on, on a Friday and on, Hajj, uh, on, on the day of Arafah which on a day like tomorrow uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, re recited this verse to the Muslimin and he said اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says today I have perfected and completed your religion for you and I have satisfied and I'm pleased 
with Islam as your religion. It is the religion of everybody, the religion of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this religion upon many messengers, upon many prophets. And, and then by the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected and completed the religion of Islam and the message of Islam uh, was sealed by the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khatamul Anbiya is the final Prophet, the final messenger. On these lands which you can see, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving the khutbah to al-wada' and was speaking to the Muslimin and was, and was telling them that uh, this is the day of tamamud deen. This is the day of perfect, the perfection of the deen, the completion of the deen. Then uh, moving on also to another virtues of this day of Arafah, it is a day in which Allah, uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, taking a qasam through that day. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ It is narrated in, in, in a Tirmidhi, if I'm not mistaking, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, الْيَوْمُ الْمَوْعُودِ is the day of Qiyamah. It's called الْيَوْمُ الْمَوْعُودِ, the promised day. Then, الْيَوْمُ shahid is the day of Jumu'ah. It's called Shahid. And الْيَوْمُ الْمَشْهُودِ, this is the day of Arafah. اليوم المشهود is a day of عرف. Allah is taking a qasam through that. It says وشاهد ومشهود. And Allah is taking a qasam through the day of Jumu'ah and also through the day of Arafah, which is يوم المشهود, a witness day. Witness day, many people around the world witnessing this wonderful day, seeing people, millions of people staying in Arafah and, and from different races, from different colors, from different countries, coming to that place, شعثاً, غبراً, they coming uh, uh, only and solely to uh, uh, to uh, respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respond to the to the uh, pillar of Islam and submit to the to this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to complete the farida of Allah, which is the Hajj, the fifth pillar in Islam. So this is also one of the virtues of the day of Hajj, it, uh, the day of Arafah. It is Yawm Mashhood indeed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a qasam through this day, uh, Al Yawm Mashhood. Then moving on, we find the Siyam of this day, and we spoke about it uh, earlier, the Siyam of the day of Arafah. It is, it is said by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated and he said that uh, in authentic narration that Ahtasibu ala Allah, Siyam Yawm Arafah, yukaffiru sanat al madiyah wa yukaffiru sanat al lati tali that it's, it's forgiving the sins of two years. Two years, not one year, two years. The year before and the year after. Fasting on the day of Arafah forgives the, uh, the, the year before and forgives the next year. All right, so we said that people can fast during the nine days of the Hijjah. You can even fast all the nine days of the Hijjah. So some people who have that confusion and say, you know what, I fast today or tomorrow, tomorrow or after tomorrow. Follow your country, my brother. But you can also fast tomorrow. There's nobody preventing you from fasting tomorrow, which is a day of Arafah in Mecca al Mukarrama. You can do that with the Hujjaj, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from you fasting tomorrow, uh, where the Hujjaj are performing the day of Arafah, and also fasting on Saturday which is the day of Arafah year in South Africa. No problems with that at all, inshallah. Fasting the day of Arafah, as we said, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الَّتِي تَلِي الْمَاضِيَةَ وَيُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الَّتِي تَلِي Forgives the sins of the previous year, forgives the sins of the coming year. So let us make that intention, inshallah, from tonight. We're going to start from tomorrow fasting this wonderful day. And in the meantime, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and making the repentance on that day of Arafah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Muslimin, for the oppressed Muslimin around the world, for all the oppressed people, all oppressed humans, wherever they may be, that the Almighty may, may forgive them and may help them and may support them and may grant them victory and, and making dua for the people of Gaza, the people of Shishnia, the people of Palestine, the people of Egypt, the people of Syria, the people of uh, Central Africa, the people of uh, Myanmar, wherever there is oppression, we make dua to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to re remove that oppression. And all these oppressions is happening because humanity is not submitting to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, killing each other for silly reasons. 
That's what, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us from in khutbatul wada' on a day like tomorrow. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inviting us not to kill one another, not to oppress one another. And we'll come to that and we'll be speaking about khutbatul wada' inshallah in maybe in another session. We'll be speaking about khutbatul wada' and about how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving the first declaration of human rights. It was done on Yawm Arafah. The first declaration of human rights was done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on Yawm Arafah before humanity uh, came to declare it and came to uh, confirm it on the 20th century. That was done 1400 years ago by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving on to the, uh, and speaking about the virtues of the day of Arafah, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he says that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us that Yawm Arafah is also called Yawm al-Mithaq. It is the day uh, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the mithaq, took the promise from the progeny of Adam alayhi salam, from the progeny of the Prophet Adam, from all the children of Adam, all the sons of Adam, from his time right until the day of judgment, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create, create all of them, Allah taking the mithaq and he says, uh, in, its, in its meaning, I don't remember the exact verse, uh, but it, it's, it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking the mithaq on them that to worship him alone to worship the Almighty alone and not associate partners to him. Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. He asked him, uh, am I not your Lord? They said, yes, O oh God, you are our Lord Allah. You are our Lord, you are the only one. Qalu bala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, is telling them, qalu bala, shahidna an taqulu yawm al-qiyamah inna kunna an hadha ghafileen. Aw taqulu innama ashraka abauna min qabl wa kunna lahum. Uh, that uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that uh, telling the people and reminding the people in the Quran that do not say that we just followed our parents we just followed our parents when they associated partners to the Almighty when they worshipped others with the Almighty no you rather remember your promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you that you will only worship him alone you will only worship him alone and you will not associate partners to him. So this is also that Yawm al-Mithaq, it was on the day of Arafah as the hadith of Rasulullah, the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is explaining this verse in the Noble Quran. So this is also one of the day, one of the virtues of the day of Arafah. Moving on, it is Yawm al-Itq min al-Nar and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes and says that ma min yawmin yu'atiqu Allah fihi subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fihi uh, uh, min ibadihi min al-Nar more than the day of Arafah. There is no day, no other day during the year uh, 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 that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is freeing many people from the fire of Jahannam and, and protecting many people from the fire of Jahannam and saving many people from the fire of Jahannam more than on the day of Arafah. On the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives so many people. Allah subhanahu wa by His grace, by His mercy, He forgives, He pardons, He uh, 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 accept the repentance of those people who return to him, accept the repentance of those people who ask for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise, the most uh, merciful. And he accepts the repentance when, when we return to him. And he says, What will the Almighty benefit if, uh, 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 from, our, from our suffering? What will the Almighty benefit from our torture in the, in the fire of Jahannam? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are believers and if you are showing gratitude to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show gratitude, will, 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 will uh, accept and will, will, will uh, be um, appreciating for, uh, for what we are doing, for, what we, for how we are thankful to Him and for how we are uh, being believers and accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submitting to His commands. Moving on, the day of Arafah also is called Yawm al-Mubaha. Yawm al-Mubaha. Mubaha in Arabic, it means, uh, it means the, 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 uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing his malaika, showing his malaika, showing his angels. You see, the angels do not have free will, like how humans have free will. Angels don't have free will. Angels are just, tell, uh, are just responding to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them. Many of the creations of Allah do not have free will. Allah is just telling them, do this, they do, don't do that, they do. So the only humankind and jinn were giving that free will and they, and they were submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely. And when they submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely and when they are making the hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his malaika and telling them, see, these are my servants, they have free will and they're coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They choose to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shu'than, ghubran, and the dust, 
is covering them because the Hajj is, a, is, is also, you get some, you get tired in Hajj and you get dust there in Hajj and your hair get dusty in Hajj as well. And it's, it's summer time and you, you also people are feeling tired there in Hajj. It's, it's not easy day. Hajj is also mashaqqa. There is juhud there. There is some uh, effort that a person need to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his malaika, see, regardless of all the juhud, all the efforts that they have done, see all the efforts that they have done, see how they're looking, and all of them, they come to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, submit to me, Allah is telling his malaika, and showing them that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hakim. When the malaika said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he firstly created Adam, the first mankind, they said to Allah, أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك Will you leave in the land some humans, some creations who will shed blood, who will kill one another, who will spoil and make corruption? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering them إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون I know what you don't know. Allah knows what nobody else knows. His knowledge encompasses everything. So uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing his malaika that see how these creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have free will and they chose to submit their free will to Allah. They chose willingly to submit themselves and their wills to the Almighty and to accept uh, his will and to obey his commands. This is the main thing about Hajj. Hajj is a journey of submission. Hajj is a journey of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the whole life actually is a journey of submission. Our whole life is a test, a short test of submission to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will you submit before you die? Because the end of test is death. The end of this test which you are in is death. You're going to live for how many years? 50 years, 60 years, 100 years. At the end you're going to die. And nobody knows when death will come. You don't know when you're going to die. You might die tomorrow, you might die in an accident, you might die at home, you might sleep today, tonight and you don't wake up in the morning. So you might die anytime. That means your test is ended. Everybody must make sure you live the life of submission. I'm not talking that uh, uh, to certain people, I'm talking to everybody, to the Muslims, to the non-Muslims. We need to live the life of submission to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is indeed the, li the journey of a lifetime which is taking from, uh, from, uh, uh, from the lives of the Anbiya. Uh, the lives of the Anbiya was a life of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lives of the Prophets were always life of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at all the Prophets, you will find them submissive servant of Allah. Many Prophets, by the way, they went and performed Hajj. They went to Kaaba, they went to Mecca al mukarrama and they performed the Hajj. And, and uh, from these Prophets, Prophet Ismail, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Ishaq, Prophet Musa, alayhis, many of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have performed the Hajj and, and, uh, and submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some of the virtues of Hajj. There are many, uh, sorry, some of the virtues of Arafah. And there are many, of course, we can talk about. But let me move on to another, uh, to another direction, the same direction actually, which is what can a person do during the day of Arafah? During the day of Arafah, my brothers, my sisters, not forgetting dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must be on our tongues. The hujjaj are they making dhikr? We also, yeah, we can make dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of tahleel, a lot of tahmeed, a lot of tasbih, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu, la sharika lahu, lahu alhamd wa lahu almulk. يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير. The Rasul of Allah, the final messenger Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, he says, he says that خير الدعاء دعاء يوم عرفة. The best dua ever is a dua which is done on the day of عرفة. And then he says, وخير ما قلت أنا والنبيين من بع من قبلي لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الحمد وله الملك يحيي ويميت. He says that after he said that the best dua is, is the dua on the day of Arafah, he said that and the best thing, the best dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that person can utter, the best dhikr that me and the prophets before me said and uttered is La ilaha illallah, there is no God except one, the Almighty is one, no God. This was the core message of all the prophets, all the prophets and all the messengers. That was the, the main message. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu, there is no God except him. La sharika lahu, no partners to him, associating partners to the Almighty Allah, such a great sin, such a major sin to think that Allah the Almighty having partners, 
having helpers, having associates. No, he doesn't have all that. He's only one. He's perfect, unique. You don't need anyone. He's greater than everyone. لا شريك له له الحمد to him belongs all the all the praises وله الملك to him belongs all the dominion and and uh, all the kingdom وهو على كل شيء قدير and he is able to do everything he is able to create everything he is able to encompass by his knowledge and by his power everything this is a dua or a zikr which everybody can recite tomorrow inshallah excessively لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير let us recite it inshallah tomorrow on the day of Arafah and also on Saturday and we recite these tahmids and tasbih subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar la hawla wa la quwata illa billah la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu all this we can recite inshallah a lot of tasbih a lot of dhikrullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran فَذْكُرُونِهِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, I will remember you. Take the name of Allah, Allah will take your name amongst the angels. Speaking to the, mentioning your name. If we say to, to you now, for example, that you know what, the president of South Africa is mentioning your name. My name is Samih, my name is Ibrahim, my name is Mahmoud, my name is so and so. All right, the president is mentioning your name and speaking in front of people here in the television and telling, all right, this person, his name is so and so. Right, taking your name, you'll feel very happy. All right, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking your name when you remember Him, when you are making dhikr, taking your name amongst a better congregation from the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking your name. So, the dhikr, first thing to do on the day of Arafah, and we must lot, do a lot of dhikr, inshallah. Moving on, a dua, making a lot of dua. And uh, uh, I must say that such in such days like that, in such blessed days like that, people must. Make ijtihad in dua. Uh, make dua in any language. You can. Some, some people say, I make dua only in Arabic. Make dua in any language, my brother, my sister. Allah understands all the languages. Make dua, ask Allah. Whatever you have from needs, ask Allah. Even, even small things. Remember, uh, uh, in the Afar is narrated that Sayyidina Musa, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for such small things, even for the salt of his food. The salt of the food, asking Allah for such small... Yes, you can ask Allah. You want a wife, you can ask Allah. You want money, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gather all the du your du'as which you want, write it down and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every salah, uh, uh, in, in your sujood specifically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qareeb in the sujood. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your sujood. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell him your needs. And when you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about your needs, don't only tell... Uh, dunya needs. Don't only don't only think of your dunya matters. Think of the akhirah matters. Think also of of jannah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for the highest stage of jannah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to be safe in your grave. Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to be safe from the from the fire of jahannam. Ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for all your needs, whether it's dunya matters, worldly matters, or next life matters. Ask the Almighty Allah. Allah is listening. Allah subhanahu wa taala is qareeb. Ni'm al mujib is near from us. He's listening to us and he's watching us and he will answer us for sure, inshallah, when you have that trust. And when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I want to uh, uh, say some of the etiquettes of dua, is that a person needs to start by praising Allah. When you start asking Allah, you praise Allah in the salah. In the salah we are reading and we're reciting and we say, Sami'allahu liman hamidah. Do you know what is the meaning of that? Sami'allahu liman hamidah. Allah listens to the one who praises him. In the beginning, Allah listens to everybody, of course, but listens here means Allah answer. Listen here, the meaning of it is Allah answer you. Answer those who praise you. Start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In your salah, you, in your dua, you start by praising Allah. One of the etiquettes of the dua is that you start, you say all praises to the Almighty Allah. Like how in salah? Like how uh, in reading Surah Al-Fatiha? How did Surah Al-Fatiha start? Starts with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Malik Yawm Al Deen, Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nasta'in. All these are praises. Then comes the dua, Ihdina Sirat Al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Sirat Al Ladina An Amta Alayhim, guide us to the path of those whom you have bestowed your favor. Ghayr Al Maghdubi Alayhim Wal Ad Dalin, and not the path of those people who were, who, whom you are displeased with, or the people who went astray. So this is this was 
uh, one of the etiquettes of dua, we start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day of Arafah. And then we also send peace and salutations upon the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then thirdly, we can also ask Allah for forgiveness in the beginning. Then ask Allah whatever you wish after that. After that, whatever you wish, put it in the dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely uh, uh, accept from you insha'Allah. Then uh, moving on uh, and speaking also about tawbah, we need to make tawbah, a lot of tawbah during the day of uh, during the day of Arafah, and we spoke in a previous program about the shurut of tawbah, the conditions of tawbah. At tawbah to nadam, as the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, tawbah is remorse, is sorrow, feeling sorry, that feeling regret what you have what you have done. If you don't feel that regret in your heart that what you have done is wrong, then there is no tawbah. There is no tawbah at all because you didn't feel sorry for what you have done. Right, so the most important thing when you are doing tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you feel sorry in your heart. Then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secondly to forgive you. Then thirdly, you have intention in your mind. I'm not going to do this sin again insha'Allah. And if you sinned against people, if you have oppressed people, then you need to fix that relation. You need to reform. You need to give back. If you take something from somebody, oppress somebody, you need to ask him for forgiveness also because you sinned against people together with, sin, with sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some of the some of the shurut of tawbah which we need to make insha'Allah tomorrow as well during the day of Arafah. I'm like giving you the, the, some of the advices before the exam. Tomorrow is like the day of the exam indeed. Every Muslim must try and do his best in the day of Arafah. Uh, dua and salah and tasbih and tahleel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Speaking about the Salaf al-Salih and the, 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 the pious people, how they used to be in, in that day of Harafah. And I remember actually one incident uh, and, a, and a true story of one of the, uh, one of the tabi'een, and I don't remember the name, but he saw, when he saw the day of Arafah and saw the Muslimin are gathering on the day of Arafah, millions of people from all over the world gathering on the day of Arafah, gathering on the mountain there. And then he saw that wonderful scene. He said, such a small statement. What he said? He said, Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa kafa biha ni'ma. This is all what he said. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa kafa biha ni'ma. You can look at the scene tomorrow in Arafah or now on the screen and say Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam. It means all praises to Allah on this blessing of being a Muslim, on this blessing of worshipping one God only, on this blessing of of submitting to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَكَفَى بِهَا نِعْمَةً And it is sufficient ni'ma for us. It is a blessed ni'ma indeed. It's a wonderful ni'ma. It's a, it's a wonderful blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are Muslims. It's a wonderful blessing that Allah is our Lord. It's a wonderful uh, 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 and, and, and a blessing and grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are worshipping Him alone. When this Salih person said Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam after seeing the scene of Arafah وَكَفَى بِهَا نِعْمَةً He said, then it is narrated that in the next year, this man came again to make hajj. And then he said the same statement again. الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى نِعْمَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَكَفَى بِهَا نِعْمَةً Then he slept and he's telling, he's narrating what he saw. He says that I saw two angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're telling each other, Wallahi, by Allah, we are still writing the thawab, the reward of this statement from the previous year. From the previous year, up till the next year, writing the reward of just one statement. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa kafa biha ni'ma. We didn't, they say the end is still telling each other. We never finished writing the thawab of the previous year, yet he make another one. Yet he's saying the same statement again. This is what he's saying, my brother. My sisters, praise Allah. Thank Allah on the day of Arafah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you also to go for hajj. Such small statement can take you to Jannah. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, he, uh, comes and he says, رُبَّ كَلِمَةٍ يَقُولُهَا الْمَرْ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا فَتَهْوِي بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا Maybe a word you, a person utter. He don't think about it. What happens? It make him enter into the fire of Jahannam, into hell for 70 years. Moving on. وَرُبَّ كَلِمَةٌ يَقُولُهَا الْمَرْ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا and maybe a word, a person just say some single statement. You say, a good statement. You say, what happens? 
it raises you to Iliyin, to the highest stages of Jannah, to the level of the prophets and shuhada and siddiqeen, just through a simple statement like that. Make ijtihad. This statement is not a hadith. It's just a statement of a salih person. We also can make ijtihad. You can ask Allah, you can praise Allah by whatever comes to your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to him belongs all the good attributes. All the good attributes belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَ فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Call him by his beautiful names. The Quran is mentioning many of the beautiful names of Allah. And also the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioning many of the attributes of Allah. You can also use these attributes and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, this is with regards to some of the salaf al-salih and how they used to uh, deal with uh, the day of Arafah. Moving on, and I want to speak about some of the scenes of Hajj uh, and correcting some of the misconceptions that some people might have uh, on the day of uh, on the days of Hajj in general. The Kaaba, the Kaaba, my brothers, my sisters. When somebody comes and asks you, uh, some non-Muslim might ask you, "What is this Kaaba? Is the first place of worshiping the Almighty on Earth?" Muslims do not worship the Kaaba, as some people think, as some non-Muslim think. Muslims do not worship the Kaaba. When you see the Muslims are circling there, this is the place in which the Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, the first mankind, used to worship the Almighty on that place. So Muslims are doing the same as the Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, used to do. The Kaaba is just a cube house. We believe that it was the first place of worship on earth. And Muslims do not worship it, but Muslims worship the Almighty there by the Kaaba. Moving on, uh, the Kaaba is the first mosque, as we say, it's the first mosque built on earth. Inna awwala baytin wudi'a linnasi lalladhi bibakkata mubarakan fi. This is the first house, the first house of worship on earth. It was there, built by Adam, and it was in Mecca or Bakka. Another names of Mecca is Bakka as well. All right, so we finish with the Kaaba. After the break, inshallah, we'll go, I think, to uh, a live uh, a live feedback from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. And after this, uh, after this uh, live feedback, inshallah, we will be discussing the uh, also Al-Hajar Al-Aswad as one of the misconceptions also regarding the Hajj. Some people see the Hajar Al-Aswad and the Muslimin are they touching Hajar Al-Aswad and they say, why are you doing that? Are you worshipping that stone there? No, we don't worship the stone. And this Hajar Al-Aswad actually uh, is, 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 it was just a focal point or the starting point for the Tawaf. The starting point for the Tawaf around the Kaaba, around circling around the Kaaba, it was the Hajar Al-Aswad and it was white by the way in the beginning. We'll come back to that, we'll speak more about all these uh, icons of Hajj, but all right, my engineer is asking me for, to continue for two minutes. All right, we'll continue for two minutes, inshallah. Then we will be uh, continuing. All right, so we were talking about Al Hajar Al Aswad. In fact, uh, when Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was rebuilding the Kaaba, I'm just telling you the story now behind what is that Al Hajar Al Aswad. When Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, was rebuilding the Kaaba, reconstructing the Kaaba, so he was looking for a brick that is not from the same color of the bricks of the Kaaba, so that this brick be the starting point for circling around the Kaaba, for the believers to circle around the Kaaba. Then he didn't find, because the, all the rocks and all the bricks are in Mecca is from the same type or from the same nature. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended a brick or a, 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 that, that hajar, that brick from Jannah, from paradise. It was white like a thilj, like the snow came down. Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham peace be upon him, took that that stone and put it in uh, and put it in the in in the, uh, in its place. And then it was the beginning of the tawaf from the Muslims understood that and they start making tawaf from the from that from that place. So it's knowing to them. All right. So this was the story behind it. Uh, why touching it? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam touched it and kissed and kissed that stone out of out of yearning for Jannah, out of love for uh, for for his father Ibrahim. Because we know that Prophet Ibrahim or Abraham peace be upon him is one of the grandfathers of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, one of the grandfathers through the Prophet Ishmael or Ismail alayhi salam. All right, we'll come back to that insha'Allah 
and uh, after this live feedback from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, let's cross to them, inshallah, and we see more wonderful and blessed scenes from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. Stay with us. Broadcasting to you live from Arafah, this is Hajj 1435 on channel 347 on DSTV. Aslam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Local time is 1 a.m. and the crowds are getting bigger as they stream in from Mina and the surrounds to Arafah preparing for the Wakt of Hukuf. Now, uh, intermittently, you've been seeing pictures of a very, very empty haram uh, with people performing a uh, tawaf. And those are locals who, by tradition here locally, go to Makkah on a Thursday evening with their family, uh, perform tawaf because Friday is a holiday for them uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So if you're wondering why there are people performing tawaf with ikharam on the night before uh, Arafah, it's because uh, they are locals and they are performing in Umrah because it's something they do uh, on a weekly basis. Some of them do it uh, whenever they have time to uh, so that they can also perform in Umrah um, and uh, benefit from that. Um, we're going to look at some of the tweets that we have received, but uh, joining me uh, uh, in our studio, a roofless studio, none to say the least, uh, is Ashraf Kenny. Ashraf, assalamu alaikum, welcome back. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, yes, brother Samit, the tweets have been coming in thick and fast, alhamdulillah. And uh, as Samit has previously mentioned, uh, we challenge the South African community and the viewers of ITV uh, that by the time the Waqt of Wukuf sets in, inshallah, that let's get I hashtag ITV Hajj1435 trending, inshallah, at least, at least in South Africa, if not... Uh, uh, across the entire world, alhamdulillah. Uh, Brother Samit has got some tweets for you, I do understand. Uh, yes, um, uh, are any South Africans in Arafah as yet? Yes, we are here. Uh, there's four South Africans here already. Um, uh, but uh, there are also some South Africans uh, that have been here from just after Maghrib. But the bulk of them will be coming tomorrow, inshallah. Or that's what we've been told uh, by the Jamaz. Then Islamia College Sports. Uh, tweeted and the hashtag was uh, ITV Hajj 1435. Our du'as are with all our brothers and sisters doing the most noblest deed in our religion. Laika Joseph says, May Allah make it easy for those Muslims, inshallah. Uh, I will see my parents there soon, inshallah. Amen. And Junaid Amra uh, says in his tweet, Indescribable feelings. Hajj Makbul, Mabrur, Aslam, and Farzana. Kids are missing you all. The hashtag Hajj1435. We can also do your message or your dua or your thought if you give us uh, your message through the hashtag Hajj, ITV Hajj1435. Ashraf? Then we've also got coming through on uh, Twitter here, we've got uh, Hashim Bastra um, from the Voice of the Cape, and that goes to uh, all the Hujaj. Um, then we've also got um, Hajj Makbul and Mabrur to the Hajjis from uh, 1434 2013 from Abdul Wahab Ibrahim in Cape Town. Then we've also got Shafiq Hanif saying salam. May the Almighty grant you an all judge Makbul, especially Uncle, Uncle Sadiq and his wife from Shafiq Hanif. Then we've also got Nariman Isaacs. Nariman Isaacs saying shukran for reading my tweet and making dua for my late dad and all these things, alhamdulillah. It was our pleasure. And then uh, also we've got uh, Umar Abram saying shukran to ITV for broadcasting Arafah. May Allah makbul all judge dua from Cape Town. Uh, from Cape Town, Najwa and family. Um, and shukran for tuning in to ITV this evening, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, broadcasting to you live from the plains of Arafah. We will be broadcasting to you live all night, Alhamdulillah, up until just after the Waktu Fuku, Samit. Inshallah, and yes, um, uh, we will bring you as much as we can. And the reason we do that is not because we can do outside broadcast. That's mechanical. That happens, but we would like you to share in the beauty of seeing over two million Muslims supplicate to the Almighty. Over two million Muslims make sure uh, that they are on Arafah, that they are performing uh, the uh, fifth and the final arkan of the Deen of Islam. And that is what we want you as a viewer uh, to be part of through the course of this broadcast. And through the course of the night, um, a number of other things will also be happening uh, on screen. Now remember in the Haram tomorrow, the black cloth or the kiswa 
um, gets changed. Um, and that all because it's a new year, it's a new month. Um, and uh, the Muslims um, uh, want to make it known that we are proud to be Muslim. We are proud to be in this space saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. That uh, tweet or the hashtag, uh, more tweets coming through. Shiham Kluta says, nothing can compare to the unity and the contented feeling one experience in Makkah and Medina. Wish we were there. Inshallah, with the Almighty's blessings, you will be back soon, inshallah. Never fails to bring tears to my heart. The sight of total submission to our Creator. Hajj Makbul and Mabrur from Nazim Fatar and Mumtaz Jiwa says, It's an experience I will not forget. The spirit of brotherhood is special. I wish we could emulate it in our daily lives. And they are getting their tweets through on air by using the hashtag IT at, or, or rather hashtag ITV Hajj 1435. Then we also have Ibrahim Abram saying that we were on Hajj 1433 and remember every single moment of those five days, Alhamdulillah. Hajj Makbul and Mabru to all who judge. Then we've also got Shahida Abdul saying, wonderful memory, we were there in 2007. Just watching the live program makes one feel uh, we are there. Then also coming through on Twitter is Shami Labi saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all who judge Hajj Makbul and Mabru, inshallah. Um, and then we've also got um, we've also got Zulfa Sali saying memories of standing on the plains of Arafah with my late dad 12 years ago, and him returning to our Creator four years ago on the day of Wukuf, Mashallah. Um, and of course, once again, we make dua for all those deceased that have passed away. Inshallah. Uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant them the highest place in Jannah um, and put Nur in their cover, Inshallah. So we're talking Arafah 1435 uh, and we're looking at what people are doing. It's just gone 10 past 1 in the morning, um, uh, Saudi Arabian time, uh, and people are all over the place. There's people streaming in with little mattresses, people streaming in with their families, how judge following the course that they were showed um, on their uh, um, educational excursion here. You are on one of those excursions. What is the ground like? On Arafah. You know, Brother Samit, yesterday I went out with one of the South African, uh, our Anwar Hajj and Umrah group, in fact, and uh, they were kind enough to invite me along to come and just get, get that first hand uh, experience of, of visiting those camps. And for those of the viewers who don't know that, unfortunately, as, as, as the ITV crew, we don't have access to, to those camps and we're not based very close by. So for me, it was an opportunity to go and see um, how, what the camps look like um, and the sort of logistics that go into it. What, one thing that I, I have to mention, though, is that we have to take our hats off to, to the Saudi Kingdom. Uh, I think a lot of effort goes into to setting up and, and, and putting in the necessary preparations to ensure that they can accommodate the, 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 the crowds of Hujaj that will be coming in, alhamdulillah. Um, I, I, I visited both the special services camp and, and the, 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 the site C camp, or as, it, as it's known. And uh, in both camps, alhamdulillah, um, preparations were well under the way. Um, for the most part, uh, there were final sort of touches that needed to go in. But alhamdulillah, everything was sorted. We then we moved on from Arafah and we went to Mina, alhamdulillah. And uh, I then managed to go into uh, certain camps within Mina, not only the South African camp, but one thing that I found was extremely, extremely amazing and humbling was the fact that you're surrounded by so many people, uh, and I'm sure those that are currently sitting in Mira now feel similar, if not the same, that they are surrounded by so many people uh, ready and preparing themselves to come and stand on the plains of Arafah and to ask Allah uh, for His forgiveness and to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all their heart's desires, inshallah. More tweets coming through that hashtag ITV Hajj1435. Muhammad Zain Majid. Uh, says, uh, may the Almighty make it easy on all the Hujaj. I mean, art is yearning to be there. M Melancholy says, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful, merciful skin tingling and heart yearning to be between those on Arafah. Again, Hujaj, their health, strength and sane mind when they enter the, enter the Waqt of Wukuf. And that comes from uh, Mona Rekliff. And uh, more du'as and more messages coming through. But tell us your stories. Use that 140 characters that you find on your um, uh, Twitter application. Send us those messages and tell us what you felt like.
what you saw, what made it stand out for you, what made you feel like this was the year that I was supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to be here last year or next year or two years ago. I was supposed to be here now. I'm supposed to perform my Hajj. And that, that moment, share it with us so we can let other people see the importance of making them near, having the Yaqeen in the Almighty, making sure the Almighty sees every bit of their effort. Remember, nothing is for nothing and our religion is very easy. It's a way of life that teaches you everything you can and can't do. Um, and one of the things it does teach you is to earn an honest living. And I'm sure if you earn an honest living, Allah will place barakah Amen. in 10 rand. And that barakah of that 10 rand will bring you for Hajj, inshallah. Also coming through now on Twitter, we have Shahida Abdul saying, excellent coverage, bringing back the memories uh, of my Hajj in 1428. We also have Ibrahim Ah. Ibrahim Ahmed saying, La baik Allahumma la baik, thinking of the Hujjaj, may Allah accept their du'as and ibadat, inshallah. Then also, may Allah make it easy for those Muslims, ameen. Uh, inshallah, I will see my parents there soon, my parents there soon, inshallah, and that comes from Laika Joseph. Then we also have Marwan Musa saying, watching the Hajj on ITV, mashallah. Um, and then also we have Mona Rekla saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all the, grant all Hujjaj their health and strength and say in mind when they enter the waqt of wukuf, inshallah. Now, Samit, having been here last year and having experienced um, Arafah on, on, on a previous occasion, for, for somebody like me that has never been here before, that, that especially because it will be my first time, is there any, any tips or anything that I should know uh, co going into tomorrow? Look, I think the most important thing is that you need a plan. You can't sit here and go, okay, I'll make du'a, make du'a, make du'a, but then not have a plan to say, who are you going to make du'a for? Have a little program to say that from 11 to 11.30, I will rest, I will sleep, so that I'm ready for the, for the um, wukuf program uh, um, that I would like to do. Make sure that you um, have an ability um, uh, to have a Qur'an with you, to recite adhkar whenever you're sitting still, to make sure that you savor this moment, this few hours that will change your relationship with God, your relationship with your neighbors, your relationship with um, everybody that you will come across from now till the day of Qiyamah. This has a bearing on that. Make sure that you, you take this moment. Thank Allah for your parents. Thank Allah for your friends that I have kept you maybe away from bad things. Thank Allah for the ni'mah of being a Muslim because there are people who have good in their heart but Allah never gives them hidayah to say the kalima. More Twitter, more Twitter feeds coming through now and uh, we have uh, Ziyad Hatta saying may Allah, may Allah grant all judge um, a living hajj inshallah and uh, may they come back to Cape Town and South Africa and inspire those who listen to them, inshallah, I mean. Then I've also got coming through on Twitter, Faldila Kenny, um, actually a cousin of mine, saying nostalgic for days, watching the ITV broadcast of Hajj 1435 is bringing back so many fond memories, alhamdulillah. Just a reminder of that challenge, uh, we want to have hashtag ITV Hajj 1435 training by the time the Waqt of Wukuf sets in. So get those, tw the, those tweets going, uh, let those fingers do the hawking. Um, for, for, for most, it, it's very, very easy nowadays with, with Wi-Fi being available. And, and we know that data is a bit expensive uh, back home, alhamdulillah. But use, use the options that you have available to you and get your message across to us, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, with the will and with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be greeting uh, some of those messages out um, on air, inshallah. Continuing with the spirit of brotherhood, this ukhuwa, this feeling, I know of a number of masajid that has special wukuf programs. Um, if wukuf's on a public holiday or Saturday it's during the day, and like this year it's on a Friday, people have special programs yeah. like making adhkar, because they cannot be here, but because it's that Mubarak time somewhere in the world, we, we're going to make our istighfar. We're going to make adhkar, we're going to remember Allah, we're going to make shukr to Allah, we're going to plea and cry to the Almighty to ask Him, Ya Allah, 
I'm here with my flaws and my shortcomings. I'm here with my sins, with my bag of bad deeds that I want you to wash away, Ya Allah. I want you to take my bad deeds and from my Welcome back uh, to our live coverage about Hajj and uh, the days of uh, and the day of Arafah and uh, we thank and say Jazakallah Khairan to the brothers uh, in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah uh, for giving us this live uh, feedback from Mecca. We just have some technical difficulty but we'll continue with you inshallah and we'll try to get back to them and uh, get more feedback from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah and uh, seeing and looking at the universality of Islam in these scenes which we can see uh, different people from different nationalities are there. Uh, all, all are brothers in Islam, all are helping one another, all are coming into one path doing the same thing. And this is the beauty of Islam and the beauty of Hajj and the beauty of this wonderful journey uh, is that you see that brotherhood in Islam and it's one of the lessons actually, one of the lessons of Hajj is it, it teaches us that brotherhood, that we are all brothers in Islam. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us, Al-Mu'minuna kal jasad, the believers are like one body. You can see them now in Hajj dressing in the same white clothes. And this also show us uh, uh, that there is no differences between the Muslims except, except uh, by the factor of piety, the factor of taqwa. All right, I was, telling, I was told that we are uh, having the feedback live now uh, back with us. Let's cross once again to uh, Mecca to Al-Mukarrama. Stay with us. Our apologies for the break in transmission. Some gremlins getting into the system here uh, between uh, where we are in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, and our head office in, uh, no in Sunny Hill uh, in Johannesburg. We were talking about that moment uh, that you must savor, where every minute must be used to make istighfar, where every minute must be, must be used to make dua. And the only way you get that right is if you have a plan. It's either failing to plan is planning to fail. And this is not where you want to fail. You don't want to fail with your first hajj at an opportunity where the doors of mercy is open. All you must do is insert the, the right formula and Allah will grant you uh, your dua. I think that's, that's a very important point you're making. I think that uh, in particular, we know that life is not guaranteed to, to, to any one of us. And uh, for those who are fortunate enough to have had received the special invitation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and stand on the plains of Arafah, to come and perform the Hajj, to go and tawaf around the Kaaba, to go and pelt the Jamarat. Let's savor that moment. And yeah, I'm speaking to myself first, uh, because this inshallah will be my first Hajj as well. So savor this moment, because not only should we be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have received uh, this special invitation, but furthermore, we should savor it because we don't know if we'll have the opportunity to stand here again. And, and I think it's, it's important that we stress that. It's, it's, not, um, it's not a matter of one, uh, just the ordinary day at the office, if I can call it that. Mm. It's not mm. you going about your daily life in, in terms of waking up for, for Salat al-Fajr, making Fajr, going back to sleep yeah. and, and, and spending the rest of the day. For example, if it's a holiday, maybe waking up a bit late, going taking the kids shopping, those sorts of things. It's nothing like that. It's nothing It's, it's nothing like you will ever experience. And inshallah, we make dua and we ask you, to, the viewers, to make dua for me and, and for the rest of the ITV crew and all the other hujjahs, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us uh, to perform not only our, our, our broadcast duties, but also fulfill our mana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being here. Inshallah. And also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a hajj makul and a hajj mabrur inshallah. My tweets, uh, shukran ITV for making us part of hajj. May Allah grant you a hajj makbul and mabrur. Make dua for us from my Rifka, Amani and Hassan. And those messages all coming through on the hashtag ITV. Hajj 1435 and uh, then here's another one it's heart melting seeing all the different nationalities as all together as one ummah I will remember all hujaj in my dua and may Allah grant them Hajj Makbul and Mabrur 
that beauty of dua, mm. that beauty of saying something positive to somebody else. If you look at it outside a religious perspective, you look at it outside a Arabic perspective, you look at it outside the waqt of Kuf, just saying something positive, may everything be good for you. Mm. On a day that that person could maybe be at the end of their tether, that is how important dua is. No matter who you are, we don't know who Allah has written to every day. Even if it's a non-Muslim, say, may God, may God grant you all that is good. May you have everything that your heart desire. We don't know what the next person's situation is. I don't know, you don't know. Nobody knows what anybody does once their door is closed. Someone can walk around coming across as religious as you could ever think, whether it be Muslim, Christian or Jewish. But that could also be by God, that person could have a lower rank mm. than that person who works every day, walks around uh, as a normal human being, but every prayer, every bit of commitment, every bit of confidence and belief is much more positive than me, you, any of these who judge, or any of the most pious people in the world. We must never judge anybody's relationship with Allah. I don't know what or how Allah sees me, but I would like Allah to see me as a humble servant, inshallah. Amen. I'd like Allah to see all of us here as humble servants who are here saying, here I am Allah, here I am opening my heart, my heart that's filled with wrong things sometimes, my scroll that has written sin sometimes, because all of us are human, we are flesh and blood, we will have sins, we will do wrong, we will err, we will upset people. The bottom line is, you are not too big to say sorry. No one is bigger than that, that few letters to say, make me mouth, I'm sorry, I apologize. The bigger person is that person who goes, puts their pride in their pocket and says, I'm sorry. And that is something we have to face. Community, sometimes you go and people say, oh no, uh, you know my father, I don't, I don't speak to him. Uh, I speak to him once, maybe eat, I go and greet him. Ya Allah, that's your father? Mm. That's the man who put food on your table mm. so you can have a muscle to lift your pen to sign a check in your multi-million dollar business. Mm. That's your father, everything you own belongs to him. Make right what's wrong. Mm. You can't claim anything without your parents. I think, Swami, that brings a very important aspect in. And we know there's a, a particular culture uh, or tradition in Cape Town, rather, where before a haji uh, or a, a, a potential hujaj leaves for, 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 for the kingdom, um, there is a system of going around to family members and friends and especially those that one hasn't necessarily spoken to in a long time or communicated to in a long time or maybe somebody that has wronged you or that you have wronged. And going to that person and saying, Inshallah, I'll be leaving for hajj. Firstly, I ask your forgiveness. And I think that is the starting point. We need to, before one... Uh, makes the intention or before one put kids onto the aeroplane to come to, to, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is to make right what is wrong at home first before you come to the plains of Arafah and say Oh Allah forgive me for the wrong that I have done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes is most merciful but remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that one should correct the wrongs that you have done to others and uh, I think because of that, the, the, the tradition that still exists in Cape Town is a very, very beautiful tradition. It's not, it, it might seem a bit of a tedious process, it might seem a bit, uh, a bit of a waste of time, and, and there's new ways of maybe doing it in terms of doing it through mass broadcast messages and those sorts of things. But I think the personal touch, the personal touch of going and sitting in front of somebody and saying, I ask your forgiveness. I ask your forgiveness for anything I may have said or done. And I think that that is the most beautiful part of, of it all. I think the Afrikaans puts it, puts it down where you go, you knock on someone's door, no matter who you are. Obviously, by the time you get to them, they'll know you're going for Hajj. Mm -hmm. And as a precursor to traveling, not knowing whether you might come back, you start off by greeting the person, mm -hmm. by, by greeting whoever's standing in front of you in their house, whether it be family, friends, or anybody else. Um, but there it can also be that you walk into that part person and by you not knowing one day you, you upset this person. Mm. 
En dan je zei, ik vraag maar, voor enig iets wat ik mag gaan doen het, wietend of onwietend. Which means, you say, I say sorry for what I've done to you. Whether I knew I was doing it or not, I say sorry. Because I want to stand in front of my maker, knowing that I did not upset any of his creation. Knowing that I did not upset another human being by my deeds or actions. Because the last thing you want is someone saying, hmm, I don't know what he's but he's talking a lot with me. It's a common thing you have. So people in, people in, 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 uh, in uh, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban, you find that. We, we have to look at it realistically and say it exists. But here's your opportunity. Here's the jackpot moment for you to go, Astaghfirullah, for my sins. Uh, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. Wake up your father now if you're not speaking to him. You don't know. Any of you can't guarantee you're going to be awake tomorrow morning. I can't say, no, it's, it's fine. I'll wait till he wakes up. No, phone him now. Drive to your mother now. Drive to your sister now. Drive to your neighbor now. Knock on the door and say, I saw me. I, I'm sorry for what I've done to you. Have peace. Have love. Have that mahabba that our religion teaches us to have amongst each other. I think so with another very important point. Khujaj come and they stand among the millions of people, uh, not only on the plains of Arafah, but throughout the days of Hajj. And there's that sense of unity. There's that sense of mahabba. There's that sense of love between uh, all Khujaj, regardless of their nationality, regardless of where they're from, and, and regardless of necessarily the language they speak. And I think it's important that as, as Khujaj, before they leave, uh, is to then make sure before you show mahabba to other hujaj and to make right what is or, 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 or to fix bonds uh, here in, 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 in the kingdom is to make sure that those tight bonds that exist between father and son or, 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 or mother and daughter or parents and children and sisters and brothers for that matter go and fix that bond and inshallah with the grace and the, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will put barakah in what you are doing. He will make it easy for you, inshallah. And uh, I think that is, is basically the core message. Um, in that one should not think that um, this journey is a journey that one can uh, undertake without fixing uh, or, or, or righting the necessary wrongs, if I may say so. I think our religion is, shows us many things in a very beautiful way. You walk into a masjid, you don't know who you're going to stand next to. You can't choose before you walk in the mosque and say, no, 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 I don't want to stand there. That's that person's space. No. You walk in the last person in the saf, you stand next to that person. The day you die, anyone's welcome at your funeral. And it's even that person you didn't speak to. You, it's your responsibility as a fire to bury that person. So don't you find so many people, you know, something that is very close to me is to try and see that everything works well together. That there's a well-oiled machine between organizations, between families, everywhere. The saddest part is that you find that should two organizations just work together, they will save a community, for example, 50 rand a month, and they will be 10 times stronger if they just work together. But they will not do that. Not because it's, uh, it's uh, detrimental to anybody's health or bad for anybody's ego, but it is them saying, no man, how can I go to them? How can I go say sorry to them? Or how can we join up with them? What's our people going to say? Don't worry about people. People will say, look at this crazy guy. He's praying everywhere. It's not about what people say, but your relationship with your God, with your Allah. And this is the culmination of it. This two million people coming here saying, La baik Allahumma la baik, la baik la sharika la baik, la ka la baik, inna alhamda, wa ni'mata, la ka wal mulk, la sharika la. That words are echoing here. We are saying to the one that made us, who has the ability to take us from this dunya without anybody knowing. We are saying to that person, Here I am. Or to that, we, we, or, or rather, we are saying to Allah, here I am, but we're not willing to say to a person who's a mere mortal with blood and flesh like us, we are not willing to say to that person, here I am, let's fix our wrongs. 
more tweets coming through on uh, the Twitter hashtag ITV Hajj fourteen thirty five, and uh, we have. Um, we have Ziad Atta saying, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all who judge a living Hajj, inshallah. I think I've gone through that one already. We have Kasim saying, Hajj Makbul and Mabruz to all who judge. May Allah make it, take us all there again. We also have Muhammad or Moji Abrams uh, make dua for me to have Hajj stories one day, inshallah. May Allah accept from all who judge. I mean, shukran for broadcasting. And also from Muhammad Hussein saying, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all who judge had makbul and mabroor, inshallah. My heart yearns to be there one day, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you here as soon as, as, as possible, inshallah. And we also have Uwais Khalan saying, Hajj in 2009. I can say truly, uh, I can truly say that Hajj is the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in preparation to meet Allah in the year after, inshallah. So keep the, the, the tweets coming through on the hashtag ITVHajj1435. Uh, we will, of course, be broadcasting the entire duration of the evening, inshallah, up until the end or just about uh, coming through into the end of the Waqt of Wukuf tomorrow, inshallah. And inshallah, once again, we, we send out the channels to you, the viewer, Let's get the hashtag ITV Hajj1435 trending, if not only in South Africa, then across the world as well, inshallah. Summit. Inshallah, we hope that uh, all the du'as that are made for and by all of the hujaz is accepted. And all the du'as that people make to say, inshallah, I want to come for Hajj with my parents, inshallah. Mm. Inshallah, I want to be a better Muslim when I go home, inshallah. Mm. Inshallah, I want to be a beacon of light to show people I'm a Muslim, this is the way Islam teaches me not to pray or not to talk, but for my way of life and to be an example so that people can say, I want to be a Muslim, not because there's cake in, in Ramadan or because um, uh, people will accept me better, but because my God will accept me and it will make more sense for me to, to be a Muslim because he has a manual for my life. There's a manual for me from the day that I am born till the day that I die with a guarantee if I follow that manual that I will receive uh, paradise, that I will receive uh, a garden in the gardens of paradise. And that's all that we yearn for. Because like this journey of Hajj is a journey from South Africa to Saudi Arabia in six hours and we perform our Hajj within a few days we're back home. Our life in this dunya, the 60, 70, 90, 100, 120 years that the Almighty decrees for us is merely a journey to a better place. But we hold the key to say, I am going to do good. I am going to obey the rules of the Quran. I am going to be a better person every day so that I can have an eternal life in the year after that is one of pleasure and happiness because I made my sacrifice. Make dua for us. Make dua for all the hujaj. Make dua for the Muslims that are finding themselves in difficulty. There are so many problems facing our religion. If it's not an internal issue, it's an external issue. If it's not an issue with a family member, it's an issue with the entire family or entire community. Make dua for our youth. There are so many youth, and Ashraf can be a testimony to it, that we come across that are 16 years old that are on drugs, that are 16 years old with Muslim names and that are being forced into prostitution, that are Muslim and are 16 years old and are being forced to be murderers for gangsters um, in areas that we go to on a regular basis. Make dua that the Almighty can make them use that energy that they are using to do good, do bad, make them use that energy to do good, inshallah, so that we can have a difference in our society, so that we don't have to worry, I wonder what's going to happen to my children, because right now, bad seems to outnumber good on a very large scale. And, and there's so much more that we can make dua for. But make dua, keep it positive, keep it going. Allah has a plan. We are merely, everything that happens is just by, co not by coincidence. That's all Allah's decree. As much as we think I'm going to a counter, I'm purchasing my ticket, business class for Hajj, Allah has decreed that luxury for you. Allah has decreed that I will be performing Hajj this year again, inshallah. Allah has decreed that Ashraf is here, that Pervez is here, or that Farhad is here, with two million other people who don't know each other literally from above. So that come here for the same reason to raise their hands in the air 
to look up in the sun and say, Allah, I make istighfar for my sins. I say sorry for my sins. I'm here with my family. I'm not here with my family because they are in a war-torn region like Syria and Palestine and Iraq and, and, and wherever there might be danger facing our communities. I'm here today, but I know of people that will be able to be beacons of light for Islam, but they are not able to be here because they are caught up with drugs or they are caught up with gangsters or they are caught up with bad friends. We must be that beacons of light to go home and tell them, you cannot do this. You have a duty to Rasulullah You have a duty toward Allah to make sure that this that I'm doing must be a benefit for the Ummah and not be a detriment for my name because I have a Muslim name and to my community and to my family. And there's so many lessons we can take from the Hajj. The Sabr lesson, I think, is... The, in Cape Town, there's a saying with people. I think Ashraf can tell you more about that. Yeah, so in Cape Town, there's a saying that goes, and when you go to visit people, or when people rather come to see you, off, there's a saying, and they always give you the advice, um, especially the elders, they tell you, don't take uh, a lot of money with you. Um, yeah. Now, for me to translate that roughly into English, it would be, it would mean that take, you leave the money behind, but make sure that you have enough sabr to deal with the test that Allah is gonna, that Allah is gonna test you with. And if I can just, if I can just maybe mention, for example, um, we landed in, in Jeddah um, on, on Saturday night, Alhamdulillah. And uh, after collecting some of the luggage of the, of, of the, of the, 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 the trolleys, we realized that Brother Samit's bag was missing. And Alhamdulillah, we still haven't found the bag. And uh, we make dua and we ask you to make dua, inshallah, that Amen. the bag uh, returns uh, to Brother Samit as soon as possible, inshallah. But immediately, as soon as he landed into the kingdom, he was faced with a, t with a test. And uh, Alhamdulillah, um, that is how Allah tests us on this journey. So it's not about how much money one has in, in, in one's pocket necessarily. It's about... The, 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 only, the only problem with that missing bag is my seven bag of summer was in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's also going missing. That's just on a lighter note. Alhamdulillah. But as, as you're mentioning the suburb, things come to mind where in Cape Town, traveling two kilometers will take you two minutes. But traveling two kilometers in this traffic, ya Allah, you walk, you go ten times faster than the traffic. But there's two million people here moving 15 kilometers in 48 hours. It's that... Uh, it's that miracle, man. It's a special thing where in the middle of the desert you can find clean drinking water for two million people for a period of six weeks, for example. It's that miracle, that blessings that Allah has blessed this place with, this people with. The hospitality where you say you're a hujaj and they give you a box of dates because you're a hujaj, not because you know them or you have a pretty face or you bought something from them, no. Because you're a hujaj. You must make sarika make dua. You come here, people don't know you from anywhere. But you are who judge, they will help you. They'll give you some tea. They'll offer you this. They'll help you carry your bag because they want all their blessings, even though they stay here. And this nation, I think, is the only nation in the world that's able to pull this. I, I, I don't think anyone else has the temperament to make this work. Any other country, I haven't been to many countries, I don't think there are better drivers in the world than the people here in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. These, these people are extremely good. We are trying to put a camera on the side of one of the vehicles to show you how close they drive to each other. It's not something you find anywhere. You don't see it on television, you don't see it in the news, but the way they drive, with buses even, it's a miracle. And if, if, if you add everything up, the water factor, to think this is in the middle of the desert, the driving, the amount of people walking from point A to point B in the desert that has a major income like oil. They don't really need this tourism, but they do that because Allah has put barakah here. There's barakah in the floor, in the, in the plains of Arafah, in the, in the, where the Kaaba is at the Haram, and that pride of being a Muslim, where people pull their vehicles off on the side of the road to make salah because Saudi Arabia, Islam started here. It's the rules they apply here. 
and, and, and we make shukr that Allah has entrusted certain people with certain things. People might have their differences. People might say, no, they had to do this and they had to do that. We don't know why certain things happen, but we do know. Come Hajj time, well-oiled machine. Everything works well. If this was in any other country with any other event, there would have been chaos year after year after year. This is just happening. It comes, it goes, they start getting ready for the next one, alhamdulillah. So, these are the memories that you treasure from here that you try to take home. And we urge you, judge, to take a lot home from here, except the driving. Because the driving won't work well in South Africa. So, inshallah, take home that sabr that you learn here. You, you said earlier on things that I can tell you what to do. Certain things will happen here that you will see it will just happen. Like when you... You prepared yourself to say, no, when I see the Kaaba for the first time, I will make this dua. Unless you are a very strong world person and you've practiced it over and over like a parrot, you'll be able to do that. But even if you see the Kaaba for the second time, on your second arrival in the kingdom, you are still shaken because of the greatness of that space. Because of the fact that a Nabi of Allah was born there, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that a Nabi of Allah, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, built that Kaaba. His son was playing next to the Kaaba. That same son that was led to the top of a mountain for a sacrifice. And we take lessons from that to say that we can now also re not reenact because we want to be prophets, but reenact because we want to show gratitude and make sacrifice because Allah has granted us the fact that we can live, that we can breathe, that we can see, that we can smell, that we can talk, that we can have a family, share emotions. You can't, you can't make that. That is a decree from the Almighty that you have certain things. And we are in that space now, in that blessed space of Jabal Rahma. Not any mountain. Jabal Rahma is right there. Yeah. The Kaaba is right there. The well of Zamzam is right there. The area where the Quran was revealed. Not any book. The Quran that has sources of knowledge from now till the end of time that we can't even understand all of it now. It was revealed here. For the same reason that the uh, sacrifice was done here with Nabi Ibrahim and his son. The same reason that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born here, not in the United States or in South Africa or in uh, um, any other country around the world, but here in Saudi Arabia, here in Makkah al-Mukarramah, buried in Madinah to munawwara in a place that never sleeps, in a place that's filled with hospitality and all those um, kind of good feelings that you have um, around this, alhamdulillah. Comments from your side? More tweets now coming through, uh, if I could just get through the tweets quickly. Um, one from Qasim Muhammad saying, would encourage anyone wanting to go on Hajj to make your niyyah regardless of your age, earlier the better. Heart mm. burns to return, inshallah. Then we also have uh, brother Abbas Murad saying, um, he makes dua for everyone at ITV that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the health and strength, inshallah. And then also, we would like to wish um, Hajj Makul and Mabrur to his his parents-in-law, and uh, he'd also like to say that his daughter Salihah misses her grandfather and grandmother while they are on Hajj. Um, so shukran for you for, for, for those tweets, alhamdulillah, keep the tweets coming in. But Sami, just on, 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 on that note, one thing for me that, that stood out in particular within the first, at, at least say 24 hours of me being here, was the fact that no matter what is going on in the kingdom, no matter what you are busy with, no matter what you are, no matter what you are trying to achieve, when that call for prayer comes, when the adhan comes, the guy making business will stop his deal and tell you, come by that door. And he will turn you away. Knowing that you, as the customer, don't necessarily provide him his result. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, when it comes the time of the call of prayer or the adhan, everything comes to a standstill. And you find people, you find people uh, performing the salah everywhere. 
we, we, we would find it strange in Cape Town if we saw some someone making salah on an island in the middle of a highway. For, for, for in, 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 South, in the kingdom, it's, 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 it's a common thing. And I think that's some of the beautiful aspects, alhamdulillah, of coming to the kingdom and, and, and visiting both Makkah and Medina and visiting even the surrounding areas and, and, and seeing that, that sincerity and seeing that, that dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not dependent on men, not dependent on customers or dependent on, 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 on you as the tourist necessarily, they are dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. More tweets coming through quickly. Riza Karalison saying, inshallah, make dua that I can also stand on Arafah with my family one day, inshallah. We make dua that that is a dream for everybody and that that is a reality for everybody, inshallah. Ashraf uh, Far Nomad is his Twitter handle, says, how, how I long to be there. May Allah grant me that opportunity. And Sarah says to my sis and bro, Ilam and Yazid, May Allah accept your, your efforts, inshallah. And Shaheed Regal says, May Allah accept all the hujaj du'as and the du'as of our parents. And may we attain nearness to Allah, inshallah. Yeah. Fatima and Shaheed Regal. And then uh, Wais Khalan says, Hajj in 2009. I can surely and truly say that Hajj is the journey to Allah in preparation to meet Allah in the year after. We're going to be handing back to the studio. It's a jam-packed morning of content from Arafah. We'll show you pictures from Makkah Mukarrama, pictures from Medina, or rather from Mina, pictures from Arafah here where we're broadcasting from. You can be part of it. The lines will be open in the studio now on a South African number that you can call, send your message, make your dua, ask your question and make your comment about Hajj 1435 live from the plains of Arafah on ITV, channel 347 on DSTV. Until we speak to you later on from myself, Samit uh, and Ashraf, Aslam alaikum and fi amanillah. Good morning. Jazakumullah khairan to our team in Makkah al Mukarrama and uh, uh, all our team who are there in the studio in Arafah giving us the scenes from there and uh, telling us uh, about the feelings of the Hujjaj and and how the uh, Hujjaj are moving to Arafah. We can see the places getting more busy uh, where the Hujjaj are ready for that big day, the day of Arafah, uh, which is tomorrow in Makkah al Mukarramah. And we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all the Hujjaj. And one of the things that the brothers uh, touched there is making dua for others. We can see that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi invite us also to make dua for one another, and uh, and uh, nobody knows whose dua is being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Maybe you you are reciting some dua, and uh, and 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 you don't you don't worry about it or you don't think about it, you don't give it much concern. But Allah subhanahu wa taala accept this dua because you did it on behalf of uh, you did it for someone else for your other Muslim brother. Uh, I've seen many of the hujjaj writing the names of the people writing the names of the people and and then uh, uh, making dua for these people so somebody going for hajj and people telling him you know what i want you to make dua for me to get this or that uh, somebody else is going and also me i want you to make dua that i have that or that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me or so on and the, the person is busy writing writing down all these da'wat of the people then when you go there and he start making dua for those people and ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all what uh, what they were uh, all what they were uh, asked for or all what the people asked him to uh, to recite from du'as and because of this sincerity because of this loyalty that the person is making du'a for others then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepting from from that person uh, i think our lines are open if somebody wish to share any of the all right i'm just taking some information all right the phone lines are open and you can you can uh, take part inshallah if you want to tell us your feelings or anything about hajj anything about the day of arafah you can take part inshallah in the program and the, the lines are on the screen or maybe i can i can give you the the numbers i think it was here it's zero one one zero eight six seven seven zero zero all right these are the numbers and inshallah it will be on the screen as well if anybody wish to share any of the uh, input regarding hajj and regarding the day of arafah which is tomorrow in makkah al-mukarram inshallah
you can do that. Uh, also, one one of the uh, one of the stories regarding making du'a for others, and not only the people in in Arafah can make du'a for others, but also us here. You can also make du'a for others. A short story that uh, came to my mind is that one person who have done many sins, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa taala in all means, he passed away. People refused to bury this person so much from the sins that the person that did in his life people refused to bury him people refused to move in the janaza only one of his sons managed to take him and and actually drag him drag him to uh, uh, to the place where he's going to be burying him but before he wanted to bury him he wanted to make the janaza on him he didn't find anyone at all except for one bedouin man was moving by his sheep by his cattle, and this is a true story, by the way. I'm moving by his cattle, and then he said to him, "What's the story?" He said, "My father passed away. Nobody wants to make the janaza salah with me. What must I do?" He said, "All right, I'll make the janaza salah with you." He said, "Jazakallah khair. Allah reward you. You came to me. Allah sent you to me." They started making the salat al janaza on him and finished, and then they managed to bury him in that place, and the sun went away. He saw a dream. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave all the sins of his father. His father was in a very good condition and speaking to him and telling him that Allah honored me, Allah forgave me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from me. He said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But what, what did, what, why all this happened to you? He said, ask the Bedouin. So he went and looked and searched for that Bedouin man and then he knew that this Bedouin man said something or said some dua that made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and forgive that person. Uh, all right, we'll come back to that story, but we have a caller online. Let's take the call first. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who am I speaking to? Uh, Shaheed, Brother, Cape Town. Brother Shaheed from Cape Town. Uh, what's your input today, tonight, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, you know, um, it just, you know, having seen all the, the video footage coming through from Arafah, this uh, took me back to last year when we were there on Arafah. And, you know, it's such a privilege being there on that day. You know, you know, when people ask me to explain to them what Arafah is all about, the best way I could explain to them is, you know, if you should go to the beach and you take a bucket of sand and you just pick that bucket of sand up, hmm. you are part of that bucket of sand. Yes, of course. The really? rest of the sand that is still laying on hmm. the beach that is the rest of the, the ummah that is it's out true. there in the world that also wish to be part of that bucket of sand. You have put it very wonderfully indeed. You know, and if you take that one grain of sand out, which would be you, hmm. it won't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference if you part of that bucket or not. Allah is still high. Yes, Allah sir. is still the greatest. Yes, indeed. And you look at yourself and you put yourself back into that bucket of sand and you won't be able to see yourself. Yes. If you look at that, all the sand laying in that bucket. But wallahi, when you make that dua, Allah listens to you and Allah accepts your dua. Indeed. Amongst all those millions of people, Allah is there listening to you. As Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler. Right? <coughs> so how privileged are they, the ones that are, are there this year on, on Arafah. Subhanallah. You know, we all wish to be there. But, you know, Allah only gives a certain amount of invitations out. And if you're part of those that have been invited or has been given that ticket to come through, well, I, there is nothing better than that. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Subhanahu wa Jazakallah khairum. I mean, Jazakallah khairan, Brother Shaheed, you, you, you actually explained it very well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that wonderful explanation. And it's true what you are saying. And there are indeed chosen people who are going for Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose those people to go and to perform this farida. And they are very blessed people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ability to all those people who couldn't go for Hajj this year to go, inshallah, in the next year and the next years, inshallah ta'ala. We have another call online. Let's take the call. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. Who am I speaking to? Uh, my name is Yaqub, your but, brother in Islam from Cape Town. MashaAllah, Brother Yaqub, Jazakallah khairan for being with us. Uh, tell us about your feelings uh, about Arafah and uh, Hajj. Wallahi, my heart is in Mina. Subhanallah. I feel, inshallah, my dua is 
الله سبحانه وتعالى قرأت أس أمين أمين تزبين نعرفه إن شاء الله That is experienced the work of Wukuf إن شاء الله That we experienced many times over and over again إن شاء yeah. الله Those who are yearning to go for Hajj Allah سبحانه وتعالى will grant them this ability for sure brother yeah. and, and have you been for Hajj before? الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين ان شاء الله يو جو اجين اند اجين اند اجين يا الله يا الله مي الله رايت في جميعا ان شاء الله امين جزاك الله خيرا بذا يعقوب ذي ذي جست وان وان يس ان شاء الله وان ادفايس اي وود لايك تو شير فيرست فور ماي سيلف ذا ريمايندر فور ماي سيلف اند فور ذا ليسنرز اند ذا فيوز ان شاء الله اوف اي تي في مي الله سبحانه وتعالى جرانت اس to receive of the ajr of the hujjaj Ameen, Ameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the hujjaj Hajj maqbool, Hajj maqbool inshaAllah We should not think that we are not on the plains of Arafat that we cannot receive of the ajr It's true InshaAllah we should make intention to fast tomorrow inshaAllah InshaAllah And receive of the ajr which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had promised us Ameen, Jazakallah khair And to remove years of our sins that we yes. have committed. This is how merciful our Lord is. Barakallah feek. Jazakumullah khair. Ameen. Ameen. Barakallah feek, brother. Have a good evening, inshallah. Brother. You too. You Come too. too. Jazakallah khair. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Yaqub and many others, many other brothers and sisters are yearning to go for hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it for them, inshallah. If you have that love, if you have that intention, if you have that resolve to go, inshallah Allah will write it for you one day. Just have uh, that yaqeen, conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try your best and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yudhi'u ajra man ahsana amala Allah will not waste your effort and will, and will give you that opportunity inshallah to meet uh, the, to, to go for hajj inshallah one day and uh, also brother Yaqub touched one very valid point and the, the, the reward of the hajj can also be giving to the people some of the rewards of that can also be given to the people while you are here as well uh, if you couldn't have that opportunity to go and to practice the hajj there. You can also try some of these things, a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa authentic a hadith, like the hadith of fasting the day of Arafah. Fasting tomorrow and fasting after tomorrow, inshallah. Fasting on the, on the, on the day of Arafah as the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, that أَحْتَسِبُ عَلَى اللَّهِ يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَضِيَةَ وَالسَّنَةَ الَّتِي تَلِيهَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sins of the previous year and the sins of the coming year just through fasting the day of Arafah. And then moving on, uh, the, another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that man salla al-fajra fi jama'a, thumma qa'ada yathkuru Allah, kutibat lahu ajra hajjatin tamma, the one who, 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 who make fajr in a jama'a, pray salat al-fajr in a jama'a, alright, moving on, then he sit after fajr and make zikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make zikr, remember Allah by his tongue, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, and so on, and even recite the Quran, till the sun is risen, Till the sunrise time, about one hour, maybe one hour, or less than one hour even. Then what happens when a person do that? He's taking the reward of a full hajj. And the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by the Sahaba, Hajjatun tamma ya Rasulullah, is it a full hajj? A reward of a full hajj? He said, yes, tamma. Hajjatun tamma. Authentic narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us such, such a simple things people are not aware of, people are heedless of. We can do it, we can practice it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for that. I was speaking about uh, some of the, so some story, sorry, and they didn't continue to complete the story. You can call us, don't forget the numbers are on the screen. It's uh, 011-086-7701 or 2 or 3. You can take part in the program, put your input, inshallah, and we'll be taking your calls. All right, uh, moving on, and we're speaking about the story of that person who are making dua. Uh, and making dua for others specifically. And on the day of Arafah as well, people are supposed to make dua for, for, for others. So I was saying that this person who sinned a lot and people for, for refused to bury him, uh, uh, and then one Bedouin man came and helped his son in burying, in burying the father who did so many of sins. Then uh, when, the son, when, when the father came in the dream of his son, uh, he, he told him that, you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with me very good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave all of my sins because of the Bedouin. So the man, the son knew that, you know, right, this man have done, this Bedouin man have done a wonderful dua for my father. I must go and check what dua did this person said. We went and looked and searched for this Bedouin man who was grazing his sheep until he found him. Many days he found, until he found that man. When he found him, he said to him, my brother, I will not leave you today until you tell me what dua did you make for my father. What dua did you make for my father that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave all his sins? 
I seen my father in a very good position in Jannah. What happened? He said to him, Wallahi, I've done nothing. I, what, oh, he said to him, okay, tell me what, what did you say? He said, what I said is, just, is that, oh Allah, when a visitor comes to me, I honor the visitor. Oh Allah, this is your visitor. Please honor him and forgive his sins. That's it. That's all what he said. By just small s sentence, by just making it tired in that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the sins of that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him. Making dua for the deceased people, making dua for the people who passed away, making dua for the sick people on the day of Arafah. This is the time. We're having another caller online. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Caller, please listen to us from the telephone and uh, make your, the, the voice of the television a little bit softer, please. Are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, I'm listening. Brother, please listen to us only from the telephone. Okay, I'm trying to. Okay, what's your name? My name is Ero. All right, brother. Brother, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from uh, Pretoria. All right, and what's your input uh, to, tonight? Uh, I, I just want to know. I... If you have questions, you can ask I also. I beg your pardon? I'm saying if you have questions also, you can ask. No, I, I just by, by chance, let, let me switch off this. All right, that's bit, it's better if you switch it off. Just, just by chance, I stumbled across your television, uh, um, what do you call it? All right, the Hajj. Uh, mm -hmm, you saw yeah. it, okay. Your, your advert. Mm -hmm. I've got one question. Yes. If you have a look at what's going on in the world today, mm -hmm. and you have you have a look. Sorry, I'm a Christian. Yes. And obviously, and what I saw on it on it on a TV sort of attracted me. But my my question is. We are all brothers. Yes. Oh, human we brothers. all come from the same father. Yes, indeed. So why do we have all the divisions in life? Mm -hmm. Very good question. That is my question. That's a very good question. All right, you can listen from the television now, and I will answer this question, inshallah, God willing. Uh, all right? Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Th thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The brother asked a valid okay. question also about the divisions and the, the, the disputes and the problems. I, I, I'm sure he's speaking about more about the disputes. He means by divisions, this, these differences, disputes, uh, problems between people. You see, when the Almighty Allah, the Almighty God, uh, our Creator, the Creator of all heavens and earth and that, when He created people, when He created humanity, He created them, as you said, from one man, one male, one female. And then they were made different nations and tribes. And the Almighty is saying in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila, lita'arafu, inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. The translation of that in Arabic, O mankind, we have created you from one male and one female. And we have made you nations and tribes. See, divisions now, all right? Because humanity multiplied, humanity became so many be people, so many nations, children, 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 generation after generation, until they became so many nations. All right. In وَجَعَنَّاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَرَفُ We made you nations so that you may benefit one another. You may help one another. You may respect one another. You may know one another. All right. This is the main purpose. All right. But what happens is that because human beings were giving free will, and the free will of everybody of us is that is what in the test all what you're going to be do doing by your free will according to your free will you will be held accountable too so some people are choosing or misusing this free will some people are misusing the free will and not going according to the legislation of the almighty god some people are just moving Again, it's the manual of the almighty god the almighty god when he created us he didn't create us and leave us just like that he didn't create us and just say, okay, you're created now, you can do whatever you wish. No, he created us and put for us manual, put for us a usage guide. Because if you go now to any shop, to any factory, and you buy a machine, you will find there, all right, with the machine, 
you will find with the, in the machine books, you'll find the manual, the instructions. It tells you, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Why is these instructions are there? To guarantee that the machine will work well. If you go according to the, to, to the uh, instructions of the manufacturer, the machine will work well. If you go against the instructions of the manufacturer, you will spoil the machine. Right, now we're going back. The Almighty is our creator. The Almighty is our manufacturer. When he created us, he put instructions also to guarantee peace and stability on this earth. But humanity, humanity is not going according to the instructions. That's why there is disputes. That's why there is problems. That's why there is divisions. Divisions and disputes and problems and wars and all this is happening because humanity is not submitting to the, cre to the, to the instructions of the creator. Once we submit to the instructions, once we keep the commandments, even all prophets, you said you are Christian. The prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, said, keep the commandments. When some man came to him and asked him and said, how can I go to the kingdom of heaven? He said to him, keep the commandments. That is exactly what Islam is saying. This is exactly the meaning of submission to the will of God. This is the meaning of Islam. Islam means to submit to the will of God by keeping his commands. By following the instructions, by following the usage guide, we will end all these disputes and all these problems, inshaAllah. I hope this answers your question. Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and guide us all closer to the truth. Ameen. All right, so this was uh, one of the brothers calling. I don't know if we have other callers, uh, but you can call in and the number to dial is on the screen. 11 86 or 203. All right, moving on, I was saying about speaking about the dua and I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the sins of this man just because of a simple prayer, a simple prayer. All right, then moving on uh, and speaking about one aspect, one of the durus, one of the lessons of pilgrimage, of hajj, is that equality which you can see. That equality which you can see in the hajj, everybody, the poor next to the rich, dressing the same dress the king next to the soldier next everybody's dressing the same is actually showing us a small scene of the day of judgment this hajj is showing us an example of the day of judgment where everybody will be equal the almighty will be judge is the judge the almighty will be judging all of us and all of all of us will be equal in front of the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hajj is there to teach us this lesson as well, to teach us the equality. Everybody is equal, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran, that inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. All of you are created from one male and no one female. There's no better race, no better color. No, we are all equal in, in the account of the Almighty. All right, we have a caller. Let's take the call first. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Who am I speaking to? Abdurra'uf. Brother Abdul Rauf, the ser servant of Allah, who is the most kind. Abdul Rauf, where are you calling us from? I'm calling you from Cape Town. From Cape Town, mashallah. And, and, and today, uh, what is your input uh, about Hajj and Dezifah? I, I, I have a question. Yes, question. That I would like to raise. But I, I but hope it's not a question, okay? For, for you, uh -huh. but as for the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we got 70 tribes. Rasulullah said, we got 70 tribes of Muslims. Yes. And different tribes of Muslims. No, but he, he said, the one, the one that follows his sunnah. Yes. That is the right tribe. Yes. That's now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it clear that after Arafah mm -hmm. is Eid, mm -hmm. why is it that we still have the two Eids and we don't have it as unity? We were tasimu bihamdillah. Allah sent down the one rope, everybody must grab onto the rope. Mm -hmm. Why is there a split in the community which we have some of our brothers having Eid on Saturday and some of our brothers mm -hmm. having Eid on mm -hmm. Sunday? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a valid question and in fact it was asked three times in today's program and I just answered it uh, maybe one hour ago but you can keep on listening and I will answer the question. I just I mean, want, inshallah. All right. Jazakallah khair. Just for me to, 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 just, just to, to get clarity on it, I would just like, like to explain to us why is it that we can't have this one eat, which mm -hmm. we did have it a couple of years ago, we had a couple, now two, three years ago, we had it all in one. Mm -hmm. Now we have it separate. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Jazakallah khairan, brother Abdul Rauf. Allah accept from you. All right. The same question again. But I just wanted to correct one statement in the beginning. It's actually a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the brother mentioned that my ummah will be divided after two 
72 or is it 62 in one another narration and all of them will be touched by the fire except one of them in fact this hadith some people mis misunderstand the hadith because the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu he, he he means that there, that, that, that there will be no sex in islam there will be no sex in islam but there will be sex outside of islam. some of the some of the Muslim Ummah, they will be coming out of Islam, out of the fold of Islam totally, except one, one of them. Who are these one? The whole Ummah, which we can see now, who are following the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all these Ummah, all these believers, wherever they may be, whether they are in India, whether they are in South Africa, whether they are in Saudi, whether they are maybe, uh, in the entire world, in any place in the entire world, they are falling under the Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. So somebody must say, yeah, you're a Muslim, but you are following the Sunnah. No, you, you, you differ in that a small or minor aspect. Then that means you are from the 72 groups. That's not right. That's not true. You, only the, 70, the 71 groups which will be in hell, these are 71 sects which went out of Islam totally. They are against or contradicting the major pillars of Islam, contradicting the main articles of Muslim faith. Those people who are contradicting that, who are acting against that, they came out of Islam, so they will be in fire of Jahannam by that, right? So we need to understand this very well, that those who contradict the main pillars of Islam, the main articles of Muslim faith, those are out of Islam, those are the 72 groups which Rasulullah sallallahu spoke about. But when it comes to minor differences amongst the Muslimin, we can't consider this to be one of the 72 and say oh, this group they're differing in such a small or fiqhi mas'ala then that means they are from the 72 groups because they disagree with me no it's not like that all the 72 groups are those 72 groups are uh, 71 groups are out of islam those who contradict the pillars of islam or the articles of faith with regards to the ahlus sunnah wal jama'ah whatever they may be in the entire world if they have minor differences no problems they're still muslims alhamdulillah now regarding the regarding the day of arafah it is it is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is telling us and teaching us through the hadith when he said that sumul ru'yatihi wa aftul ru'yatihi. It is the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is telling us and giving us the example and the major principle, the major principle that the, the hijri calendar or the hijri months must be seen through the moon, must be uh, uh, considered only through the moon. So we've seen it through the moon. Now it is scientifically known that the moon is differing, from, from, sighting the moon sometimes differ from certain area to, to another area. It might be seen here, it might not be seen here. In the past, during the Khilafah time, till the year 1924, the Muslimin were one unity, were one ummah. All the different countries of the world, all the different Muslim countries, one, one, one ummah, one unity. So if one seat here, all right, the entire ummah will, will be following. So there was, you, do, you did not consider that sighting of the moon so much uh, or different, the different places of sighting of the moon. But now there is divisions. The, Muslims, the, the Muslim Ummah is no more one Khilafah, no more one state. So it's different. So each country now, must, each Muslim must follow the sighting of the moon in that sectarian of seeing the moon in his, in his area. If you see the moon, you, 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 then the, the month is counted. If you don't see in the moon, the month is not counted. And this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars and the, and the scholars in South Africa as well. So we, we need to understand that. And we need to understand that, that year in South Africa, Eid is on, on Sunday, there's no problems. It's not contradicting anything. And if you want to fast, you can fast with tomorrow. There's no, nothing wrong with that. You can fast tomorrow with the people of, of Arafah who are in, in, uh, in Mecca al Mukarrama, you can fast with them and you are rewarded for that as well. And you can fast with the people of South Africa as well if you wish. If you don't wish to fast the Saturday, no problems, it's up to you. But we're telling you that you can fast this and you can fast this together as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from you. All right, uh, we have another call online. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Who am I speaking to? Um, you are speaking from somebody of Cape Town. All right, sister. Uh, uh, yeah. Tell us your input about Hajj and um, Days of Arafah. My input is more, more. It could be also as a question. A question. All right. The input now, is it a question. could be a question also, but um, as we know, they say there is no better day than the first day of the Yes. The first ten days. The first ten days. Yes. True. Right. Now the first ten days, when you sight the moon, like I've heard now, mm. Maulana was saying. It's how you see it in your country. Yes. And I agree with that. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, everybody saw the moon on the first, and they said, okay, it's fine, it is the first. Mm-hmm. So if they are going to have it on Saturday, mm-hmm. it can never be the 10th. So as children, we were taught that for the uh, Ramadan Eid, when the men go to the mosque, you must eat. So to show that Ramadan is over. Mm-hmm. But for this Eid, you don't eat after Fajr. You go to mosque, you come back. Men go to mosque, they eat Salah, and they come back, and now they have something to eat. Mm-hmm. So Allah grants us that few hours of abstaining from food complete the 10 days that we are fasted. Could I be wrong in that? No, no, it's, it's not. You can, you can still eat. Even if you if you go before you go to masjid, uh, before you go to isn't it the sunnah not to have no 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 you can eat. you can eat you can eat during the day of uh, I mean before before you slaughter you can eat there's no problem at all it is no, not ma- maf, maf, maf. Hmm. not slaughtering for the eat salah you just abstain from after fajr mm-hmm. to eat salah no you see it uh, it is sunnah that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to uh, eat from his udhiyah first. The first thing you see is from his udhiyah. But there is no problems or no uh, nothing preventing that a person, after praying the Fajr Salah, uh, he mustn't eat until until he makes Salah first. No, you can eat still. There is no problems with that. All right. So this is with regards to some correction here. Yeah? Is that you can okay. still eat with regards to Eid al-Fitr? That is different. Eid al-Fitr, you, you a Sunnah is that you're supposed to eat in the beginning. All right. Uh, uh, before you go to the before you go to the musalla, right? Okay. Yeah. Re- regarding the ten days of the Hijjah, uh, the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, that these are the, the best ten days. al amal al-salih Allah that there is no better works can be done in any other days of the, the year except in the, uh, more than these ten days. It refers metaphorically to the nine days before the day of. The Hijjah and the tenth day also, which is the day of Eid, is also a day where the Muslimin can do good amal and where the Muslimin are doing the Nahar, Yawm al Nahar. It's also considered a wonderful and great doing and it's rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakillah khairan, sister. Hope this answer. Shukran and you have a good Eid day. I mean, you too. Allah reward you. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right. I was continuing, I was talking actually about that equality in Islam. Equality in Islam as one of the messages, as one of the as one of the durus, uh, uh, as one of the lessons we're learning from Hajj. You can see that uh, Hajj is teaching us that equality. Everybody is same as the other. Everybody is uh, equal as the other. And in the Hajj, you see people, and in these simple clothes, actually simple clothes. What do they have? They're just two pieces of clothes. And this shows us the simplicity of Islam as well. Islam is very simple, my brothers. Islam is very simple, my sisters. The prophets of Allah, they were the icons of simplicity, dressing very simple clothes and going and meeting with people and inviting them and sitting with them. And Rasulullah meeting people and shaking hands with them and, 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 fee, and making everybody feel that he's the best one. This is Rasulullah how he used to deal with people. We learned that simplicity also from Hajj. See the hujjaj in these simple clothes, they're dressing simple clothes and they go in there and they, and, they, and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to learn that as well, the simplicity in our life. We need to have that simplicity in our life and we learn it from the hujjaj and how they are dressing in very simple clothes and how they're dealing with each other and helping one another and being beneficial to one another. Right? Another thing we are learning is that uh, from the Hajj as well and from the Druze, from the lessons of Hajj, is mixing with the good people, mixing with the pious people. The environment, my brothers, the environment, my sister, make for yourself a good environment. If you live in an environment where there is an infection, what will happen to you? Obviously, you'll get infected. Same thing, if you live in a good environment, you will be affected by that good environment. It will put some effect on you. So make for your, try to make for yourself a good environment of pious people, a good environment of good friends, a good environment of a nice and wonderful and big family of Islam, of Muslimin. Same like how the people who are going for Hajj, they joining the big and the greatest environment ever on earth. That's the environment of Hajj. Those people who got chance to go for Hajj and sacrificing everything and to go, they are pious people. 
They are struggling to become pious people. So they are there, they're helping one another to become more pious people. That's why when people come out of Hajj and they go home, they go home refreshed. They go home clean from all the sins. They go home different people, they come different people. I can assure you this is happening to most of the Hujjaj. Most of the Hujjaj, they return back from Hajj, they're changing. Why are they changing? It's because of the environment. They lived there for 10 days, for four days, for five days, for six days, for whatever days. They're living there and during the Hajj, mixing with good people, mixing with pious people. They were isolated from the other environment, which may be leading them or led them at certain point in the life to some khati'ah or to some problem or to some difficulty or to some uh, disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now they were isolated for a while in that good place, Naqaha period, as we call it in Arabic. It's the time where they getting cure and medicated there in, in that environment. Then they come back refreshed and wonderful and cured. So we learn from that to make our own environment. I remember that story and most of you may be know that story, the story of that man who killed 99 person. It's a narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a hadith. He killed 99 person. Then he went to a man and he asked him, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my tawbah if I repent to him now? Will he accept me? Will he forgive me? He said to him, no. You killed 99 people and you want Allah to forgive you? Go from here before we get doomed by you or be get punished by you. So when the man heard that, he killed him and completed the 100. He killed 100 people. Now, he went back to, to another person. After a while, he got some sorrow in his heart. He wanted to repent. He went to another person, but this person was a scholar. He asked him, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my repentance? He said, of course, my brother. Whenever you repent to Allah, whenever you repent to Allah, Allah's door is open, He accepts you. But you need to change your environment. He advised him a very good advice. He said to him, go to the village of so-and-so, where there are some people who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. So worship Allah with them. Why did he advise him this advice? So that to keep him away from the environment of evil, and to put him in the environment of good, then the environment of good will surround him and will give him good effect, will make him a good Muslim. This man on the road to that village, he passed away. On the road, just on the road to the village, he passed away. The malaika, it is said that the malaika of punishment and the malaika of good, the malaika of, 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 of Jannah, they were competing and they were disputing who will take this man, who will take the soul of this man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the malaika to measure the distance between the two places, between the, the, the scholar, between the man and the scholar, and between the man and the village. If he is near to the man and uh, to, the, to the village, then the malaika of, of paradise can take him. And he was near, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the distance near to the village. And then he was taken by the malaika. He was forgiving by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a wonderful and true story was narrated by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us the importance of the environment, the importance of being indulged in a good environment. So this is one of the lessons we are learning from Hajj. Moving on, another lesson we can learn from Hajj is sacrifice. If you want the truth, if you want, if you want goodness, you must sacrifice. If you want istiqamah to be on the right path, you will need to sacrifice. Don't think that, you know what, I'm going to be a good person just like that. No, my brother, you need to struggle. This road is the road of the prophets. This road, many people passed away on it. This path, many people were tortured. This path, many, many people, many Muslimin before you, they were slaughtered. This path, many Muslimin where you struggled. And they, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Aina al mushammirun where are those people who are, who are getting ready for paradise? The Rasul of Allah وسلم, says, Indeed, the sil'a of Allah, the goods of Allah is expensive. And the goods of Allah which is coming to you is Jannah, is paradise. So you need to prepare for that. You need to prepare for paradise. It's expensive. Paradise is expensive. All right? So preparation. We need to struggle. We need to strive. We need to sacrifice. We need to be ready for, the, for, 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 for Hajj. We need to be ready for the next life, prepare for the next life. Do some sacrifice to be on the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful are those people who purify their souls. How are you going to purify your souls? Through sacrifice. 
If you don't sacrifice, don't think that you will be on the right path. You will fall from the right path. You will deviate from the right path because there is, you're not ready to sacrifice. You will sacrifice your time. You will sacrifice your patience. You will sacrifice your power just to be on the right path and take advantage of all the possible means. And seek in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you the next life. So this is also one of the lessons of Hajj we are learning. The Hujjaj going there and taking long distance to go to Hajj, leaving behind them maybe families, leaving behind them their children, their property, their work, spending money, and going there to, the, to that place, standing in the heat and doing the manasik of Hajj, doing the sha'air of Hajj, doing the rituals of Hajj for so many days and then come back home. This is a sacrifice in itself. And we are learning from that sacrifice. And we must learn from that to sacrifice as well. Moving on to another benefit uh, or another lesson that you can learn from Hajj is learning the knowledge. The Hujjad, before they go for Hajj, they start learning. What I'm going to do there? What is the first thing that I'm going to do when I just come out of the airplane? Then what is the second thing? What is the third thing? What is the fourth thing? It's like that. You need to learn. We'll come back to that topic of learning uh, uh, this lesson of learning the knowledge uh, after that call, we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Who am I speaking to? Sheikh, uh, I would like to stay anonymous. All right, sister. Jazakallah khair for being with us. Allah accept from yes, you. Sheikh, um, um, I would like you to make dua and ask Allah to guide me and protect me. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I want me. to ask Sheikh, what is the dua to make for Salatul Tawbah? All right. All right. I will. I will. I will. I will mention that. Jazakallah khair. You can listen on the television. All right. You see, uh, any du'a for tawbah a person can make. Any du'a. But there is a certain du'a in which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is the master of the du'a of forgiveness. The master. It's called Sayyidul Istighfar in Arabic. Allahumma anta Rabbi, la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani, wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdik wa wa'dik ma istata'at. أعوذ بك ربي من شر ما صنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت I will say it again slowly so that you can write it down or you can record it maybe and beside this dua you can make any other dua any other dua for forgiveness oh Allah forgive me oh Allah I've sinned I've done this sin please forgive me please accept from me in your language even you can say it no problems the dua which is called Sayyidul Istighfar, taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said that, in, anyway, he said it, people are supposed to say it every day. This dua, you're supposed to say this dua every day, Sayyidul Istighfar. Sayyidul Istighfar is, Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Allahumma anta rabbi. La ilaha illa ant. There is no deity, no God except you. Khalaqtani, you are the one who created me. Wa ana abduk, and I'm your servant. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكْ And I'm trying to keep your promise. وَوَعْدِكْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتْ As long as I can. أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا صَنَعْتْ I seek refuge and protection in you from the evil of what I have done. أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيْ And I confess your blessings which you have showered me with. أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيْ وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِي And I'm telling you about my sin. فَاغْفِرْ لِي So forgive me my sins. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ For you are the only one who can forgive the sins. Indeed. This is the dua. Very simple. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it from you. And it's called Sayyidul Istighfar. And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم says, مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ A person who makes a sin. And then he makes two raka'at of salah. And in these two raka'at of salah, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Forgiveness is guaranteed. Forgiveness is very easy if we just repent, if we just show the, show the, the sorrow and, the, and, and show the regret and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness in any language, in any way. Allah will accept it, believe me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghafoorul rahim. Moving on to the lesson of, uh, lessons of Hajj and lessons of Arafat as well. Learning the knowledge, we said that the Hujjaj, before they go there, they try to learn. When they go there also, they learn and they listen to the lectures and they listen to the khutbah. And tomorrow they will listen to the khutbah as well. Listening to that and benefiting from that. Rasulullah sallallahu gave a wonderful khutbah on the day of Arafah and teaching the Muslimin. And he said to them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling them, Oh people, listen to me, for maybe I will not talk to you again 
ever after this year. He knew that he's going to die. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knew that he's going to die and he told him, listen and learn from me. Listen, I'm telling you something which will benefit you ever. And he started to teach them. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, 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 tomorrow the Imam also will, will make the khutbah of Arafah. And we need to learn from that. Learning the knowledge. Very important and essential. My brothers, my sisters who are there at homes, make it a, a must upon yourself to learn every day or every week at least. Listen to a lecture by a scholar. You can download it from the internet. You can listen to a motivational scholar who motivates you. Don't listen to just, I'm just listening. Listen to someone who, motivate, who can motivate you, who can bring tears from your eyes, who you understand from, who you appreciate. Get his lectures, download it from the internet or get it from CD or whatever and listen at least every week to a lecture. This will keep you refreshed. This will keep your iman high. This will keep your level high. We say that your heart is like the cell phone battery. The heart of the believer is like the cell phone battery. If you don't charge the cell phone battery, what will happen to the cell phone battery? It will go flat. It will go flat. Same thing, if we do not charge, if we do not charge our hearts through maw'idah, through the remembrance of Allah, through the ulama scholars nasiha, what will happen? Our hearts also will be flat. So you need to charge it by listening to the motivational scholars and listening to, and learning the knowledge, learning the deen and having the ta'leem in our house. If the husband learns something, you tell it to, to the wife. If the wife learns something, no problem to tell the husband. The children can tell. We can have that gathering of the family, the ta'leem gathering of the family. And we sit together at least once a week. And the son say a hadith, the, the, the daughter say a hadith, the wife say a hadith, I am say, telling them a hadith, or reading from a book as well. That's, believe me, it will bring barakah to the house, bring the blessings to the house, bring unity to the house. It will end the problems between the family. Try it, guaranteed for you. All right, we have another caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who am I speaking to? Iqbal Khan. Brother Iqbal Khan, where are you calling us from? From Johannesburg. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Brother, Brother Iqbal, if you can tell us your input, you are welcome. You, uh, this program, I'm really, I'm watching it from this afternoon. All right. JazakAllah. And, and I'm very, very proud. My son is there in Hajj. Alhamdulillah. And my daughter-in-law. MashaAllah. Make dua, inshallah. Allah pak accept their duas. Ameen, ameen. Allah grant you Hajj, inshallah. Inshallah, maghu. Thanks very much. I just wanted to say. Jazakallah khair al jazak. My brother, for that input. Wonderful. Barakallah feek. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The lines are opened 011-086-7700 or 1 or 2 or 3. All right. Continuing, and we were talking about Hajj and the lessons of Hajj. And there are many lessons we can learn from Hajj and uh, mentioned that ukhuwa, that brotherhood in Islam. Muhammad is like Ali, is like John, is like Ibrahim, is like Ismail, is like Musa, whoever you are from the entire world, they are the universality of Islam is there in the Hajj. We are learning from the Hajj, that universality of Islam. And we can see that Islam is reaching everywhere. Islam is not only the it's not the religion of the Indians only. It's not the religion of the Arabs only. It's not the religion of the European only. It's not the religion of the people of America only. Islam is the religion of everybody. 1.7 billion Muslims on that planet. Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth. Fastest growing religion on earth. Growing in a very rapid rate. Because people think about it. People start to know about it. However, Islam also is the most misunderstood religion in the world. It's the fastest growing religion and the most misunderstood religion in the world. There are many misconceptions are there. Many misconceptions spread about this religion. Many fake information spread about this religion. 50,000 books imprinted with fake information. 50,000 books are giving wrong information about the religion, attacking Islam, hurting the feelings of Muslim, generalizing if there is some problem or some big bad people, you will find the media is focusing on that negative idea and telling, all right, Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are doing that, Muslims are... Brothers, do not generalize. Don't judge a car by looking at some passengers. If you want to judge the car, judge the engine of the car. 
If you want to judge a religion, any religion, Islam or Christianity or whatever, read the book, read the teachings of this religion, then judge it to be fair to yourself. All right, we have another call online. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. May you please make your television a little bit soft and listen to us only from the telephone. What's your name? My name is Ilyas. Sheikh Ilyas Saki. MashaAllah. Brother Ilyas, where are you calling us from? I'm calling you from Credoc. MashaAllah. Please make the radio, uh, the, sorry, the television a little bit softer. And now okay, you, can put your, you can start and tell us your input, inshallah. Okay, Chef, I want you to explain to us what types of animals we should slaughter on the Qurban. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I, I wanted to say something that I, I am not actually a qualified mufti. This is in the beginning, right? So I, I don't want to go into the, into the giving fatwa. However, I answer the questions about faith, about comparative religions. This is my specializing field. Uh, all the questions about fatwa, we will inshallah delay it to Maulana Sulaiman Ravat who will be coming and answering these questions. But in the meantime, I will answer this question, inshallah, from my little knowledge that I have. Jazakallah khairan for calling, all right? Okay, all right, with regards to the Qurbani, and what animals a person is supposed to slaughter, you must understand that you're slaughtering for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who wants to slaughter, you must, the first thing to do is to choose the best thing to slaughter. Look for the best thing to slaughter. And when we say the best thing, do not try and find, for example, some animal that is uh, that have some some uh, problem or sick animal or an animal that may be a smaller than than uh, I mean not 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 not, uh, not big enough to be slaughtered. That's not accepted in Islam. So an animal which reached the, uh, the, the 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 age of slaughter, you can slaughter and doesn't have any defects. Doesn't have any defects. Is not sick animal. It's fine. You can you can slaughter inshallah. You can slaughter a sheep, a goat, and also you can slaughter uh, uh, the uh, from the from what you call it uh, the uh, cows and also the buffaloes. People can 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 slaughter that inshallah. All right. Uh, all these are considered uh, uh, um, the 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 udhiya. People can slaughter, and then we move on to our program and continuing speaking about some of the lessons that people can can benefit from the Hajj, inshallah. All right. It is said also that Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "Liyashhadu manafi alhum." Liyashhadu manafi. The Hajj they when they go, they witness manafi alhum. Manafi means benefits. What benefits are coming or witnessing witnessed by the Hajj? They witness. The forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to them. They witness the Muslim ummah and the beauty of the Muslim ummah. They see one another. That's why the day is called Yawmun Mashhud, as the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a day which is witness day. A day which is witnessed by the people who are making hajj, witnessed by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, witnessed by the Muslimin, the ummah of the Muslimin, watching and looking and seeing, watching also, watched also by the Entire world, the entire world is seeing that. Which or, 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 or what gathering on the entire earth that have over two million people on earth? Which way on earth this is happening? Happening only in Mecca al Mukarramah, happening only in that in that place, happening only in the Ummah of Islam where the people are worshiping one God, only the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We worshiping Him there. All right, so this massive gathering shows the universality of Islam, shows the, uh, uh, the simplicity of the Muslimin, shows that this is the Ummah which is commemorating and, 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 and commemorating and, uh, uh, the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, story and taking the rituals of Hajj, many of the rituals of Hajj from the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام. This is the Ummah of all the Prophets. We don't differentiate between them. We do not differentiate between the messengers, between the prophets. We accept all of them. All of them are considered the Muslim prophets. And some people have that misconception. They say, you know what? This prophet, uh, Islam only sp uh, uh, spread or Islam only started by Prophet Muhammad. This is not true. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the final messenger of Islam. But before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, all the previous prophets, they were considered Muslims and they invited the people to Islam, which is submission to Allah. So 
by that definition of submission, Islam means submission to the will of God. The Prophet Isma Jesus, peace be upon him, was a Muslim according to us. The Prophet Moses was a Muslim according to us. The Prophet Abraham was a Muslim according to us. Jacob was a Muslim according to us. Noah was a Muslim according to us. And all the Prophets who ever came, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned in the hadith, there are over 224,000 messengers. 224,000 Prophets, sorry. 224,000 Prophets were sent to humanity. This is according to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the Quran didn't mention all the 224,000 prophets. Quran mentioned few of them, few of these prophets, because it's not a history book. It's not going to fit to mention 224,000 messenger or prophet of Islam, but mention few of them so that we can learn the lesson. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran is telling us that وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَصَصْنَاهُمْ عَلَيْكَ وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْصُصُهُمْ عَلَيْكَ Some of the messengers, we have told you Muhammad in the Quran their stories, and some of the messengers, we didn't tell you their stories. So we need to understand that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messages to every nation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are the final nation, the nation of Qur'an. And this nation of Qur'an is, uh, is, Muslim, uh, is following Islam and all the, mess the previous messengers are belonging to us. All the previous messengers, we, according to Islam, were also Muslims. And many of them performed that farida of hajj. Many of them came to Mecca al-Mukarramah. And the hujjaj, which we can see now in Arafat, they are walking on the footsteps of these prophets. They are walking in the footsteps of the Sahaba. They are walking on the footsteps of the Tabi'een. They are walking in the footsteps of the best generations. They are moving there. It, what is your feeling? What is your feeling when you go and perform Hajj and you know what? Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, walked from here. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, walked from here. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stood by Arafat. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq stood at that place, at that mountain. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an stood at that, at that place. I'm moving on the footsteps of Sayyida Fatima. I'm moving on the footsteps of Sayyida Aisha. I'm moving on the footsteps of Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. Wa anhum, wa anhunna. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So we can see it's a very blessed and very wonderful moment. You can see the hujjaj there getting ready and moving uh, in, in the areas of Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, moving to Arafah and trying to stand there and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us and teaching us. Khayru dua, dua yawm Arafah. The best dua is the dua on the day of Arafah. I'll try to get some water inshallah because my voice is a bit going over uh, and in the meantime I'm just uh, very touched by the scenes of the Hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to go for Hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the Muslimin and those who are yearning to go for Hajj the ability inshallah to go for Hajj we'll try to go for a short break inshallah and uh, after the break hopefully we will be wrapping up today's program and then uh, inshallah we'll be continuing with you tomorrow Jazakumullah khairan for listening keep watching stay with us